It's like Alien Robot. It's yeah, Alien, Alien Robot. Robot. Cocoon yeah. meets Short Circuit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jessica. You, yes. Yes. Hume Cronin and, and Jessica Tanti. <laughs> Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. This episode of Sincast is brought to you by Mubi, a curated online cinema streaming exceptional films from around the globe. Each day, Mubi introduces a new gem and you have one month to watch it. From cult classics to acclaimed masterpieces, every film is hand-selected by experts. Try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash cinemasins. That's mubi.com slash cinemasins for your extended free trial. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from Simmasins. You know, that's fucking hard to say. Yes, Think is. about all the things that are the S's and the is's and all that that's going on in there. <laughs> you're not going to get very much sympathy from me because every script I narrate for a Sins video, there's some kind of tongue twister. And oh, I'm shit. mentally going, you try saying this shit when you write it, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. It's usually not you, though. It's usually Dicer. I mean, Dicer is like the wordplay king. Well, and, like when string you're, together sounds that aren't natural. When you're reading it, it's you know a lot of times it's like oh that okay yeah i may have to change some words i, I usually do that and end, end up changing words. i appreciate that um but i did write one that you might have a problem with on the purge if you haven't already done that one i have and it'll be t- it'll be this afternoon yeah. i'm looking forward to that <laughs> how, how much how much dead could a dead beat beat if a dead beat could dead <laughs> beat beat dead horses okay see <laughs> now in service of a good joke like that i'll do as many takes as it takes to get that right <laughs> i'm talking about like where we, you just don't even think about the words you're using and you accidentally put like three double l's <laughs> in yeah. two and a half words Anyway. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hard thing to do to like sit there and on a script and just be like, okay, is this hard to say? Yeah, <laughs> I'll usually say it out loud and just be like, yeah, ah, that's sort of how I'm kind of doing it too. It's like it's like I don't say it out loud, but I do say it out loud in my head, mm-hmm. and I'm like, ah, yeah, it's a little awkward. Funny, <laughs> but berry but bunnel beans. What does he, <laughs> yeah. what does he say? Funnel fair <laughs> butter bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all that to say, also with us today. <laughs> Hi, is our is our friendly na- narrator Jeremy Scott? Hi, who is not at at all bitter about any of the narrating? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And uh, for music video sends uh, Barrett share. What's up? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Today we're going back on our road trip. Yeah, Ooh. road trip. Shotgun. On the road again. The most time honored tradition of all. The road trip. Oh, the places you'll go. Are we there yet? No. 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 We will be going to New York. New York. New York. You can't be a new man. New York. You can't be a new man. <laughs> Sorry. New, yes. New York has obviously a ton, mainly because of New York City. New Ooh. York City. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 I guess it's a lot like how California was, although we short, we gave California short shrift and tried to do it in one episode. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to cut this one up into two probably mm-hmm. because there's so many and everything. And we don't want to leave out New York state and all of oh, this. Cause there's just so many, you know, great and classic movies in here that like, I went through a exhaustive list of this and I still woke up this morning. I was like, how did I not put in this or yeah. that or that? You know, one of them is Citizen Kane, which is a heavily New York. Yes, Xanadu yeah. is in Florida, but like it's completely New York outside mm, of that. Yeah. How do you leave that out? We want to make sure that we get to, you know, all all of the the interesting stuff uh, that makes New York movies, New York movies. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Manhattan's the one, the part that you think about when you think about New York City. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though all five boroughs are considered New York City, that's really the city. That's what people refer to. And we were so, just there. Yeah, we were just there. Um, and uh, so what's the on the top of this uh, list is 12 Angry Men. Oh. Uh, before we get to that, I hate to take the party down a notch, but obviously there's a billion movies that are uh, about September 11th. All right, so it covers World Trade Center, extremely loud and incredibly close. The Charlie Sheen thing. Yeah, (laughs) just called 9-11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's a bunch of them, and I don't... Are any of them good? United 93 is a very good movie, but yeah. that's not about the... Not really New York. The New York yeah, thing. Yeah, it's not really New York. I mean, it's got some New York in it, but it's it's really about that flight that crashed in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, no, World Trade Center is not very good. Right. Um, it has its moments, but it's it's not very good. Um, but yeah, that that uh, one, the Tom Hanks one that you mentioned, extremely loud, and which close. I will I will invert words and change words yeah. on that title <laughs> until I die because I may never watch. There's it. a Sandler one too, right? Uh, yeah, it's uh, rain on me, rain on me, rain over me, that, rain like over me. Yeah, rain rain over me because it's that Who song. I mean, I honestly. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But I even that, that say, was more aftermath anyway. Yeah, but like, I think we're too. I just think we're still too close historically to really, mm-hmm. to really dive in dramatically and look for themes that can be impactful on film. And so what we we're left with is something like World Trade Center, which is a slog. It's like a, it's like a dramatic recreation of a guy who's probably going to die in the rubble. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not again. It's not like a World War II movie where we can step back and there's historical context and we can kind of. So again, I understand the rush to make movies about recent events, but yeah, I out. find myself mo- much more moved by whatever the name of that documentary is that weaves all the footage and audio yep. from real sources together to tell the whole story. Oh yeah, uh, super impactful. Gets me every. I watch it every year, and it's great. And There's I don't no narration. Are you, are you talking about the ones where it's like the people in their apartments and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it's all collected from real video and audio sources. And you're right. There's no narrator. There's text on screen every now and then. Um, but again, I don't know why we're trying to dramatize something that's already pretty fucking well, anyway, dramatic. Yeah, those mm-hmm. were that both World Trade Center and United ninety three came out five years yeah. after the thing. Now United ninety three, like I think they managed to pull that off. Obviously, mm-hmm. it was Paul Greengrass at the height of his powers, but World Trade Center, not Oliver Stone at the height of his powers. No, no I mean that's I like Oliver Stone, particularly eighties, nineties Oliver Stone, but he's not the guy to rely on to give you a straightforward narrative well and if uh, oliver stone's gonna make a movie about the world trade center i'm uh, but uh, pardon me if this is crass but i want it full of fucking conspiracy theories and i want oliver stone to make that movie not you know because anybody could have been clint eastwood directing that Mm -hmm. shit Mm -hmm. yeah anyway um but uh all right so let's go on to this list here our alpha numeric list here that's right 12 angry men which is an outstanding film Sidney lumet 1957 oh it's so good um uh, it it's great just because yeah it's uh it shows sort of a. Uh, you have one person who's not convinced in a in a murder is it a murder case uh it is a murder case yeah, yeah uh one person and that's that person's henry fonda i believe yeah um who isn't convinced about something and everybody goes in the room just ready to to give their verdict and everything and he's like hold on we have to kind of think about this don't we and that's where that whole thing that is just a a great drama like Mm -hmm. trying to convert so many of these people including the worst of the worst that's in the room yeah and And, it's uh what makes it most effective and what makes it most effective as a play too is that it all takes place in one room uh it's set in and i love it when movies do this where they set the weather as a character it's hot it's super Mm -hmm. hot and you can tell that they're not only getting heated from the conversation and all that stuff and from the interactions but from the weather and that's exacerbating everything god it's okay so i'm I'm gonna confess i i haven't seen this in ages it's probably been 15 years uh and i i've seen it two or three times but isn't there some kind of like massive sporting event like a world series or a boxing match the going Yankees on are that playing. they can't get yeah, yeah, to yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're stuck in this room doing yeah. this thing and it's just this it's all one night mm-hmm. um there have been multiple versions of this ving rames and jack lemon were in yeah. a, a pretty modern mm-hmm. version that's fantastic because the source material is so great mm-hmm. um and yeah it should be this is what we kind of hope the jury is like if we ever go up for a crime right right open enough to consider all angles and be willing to change your mind the reality I think is that the most juries probably go in like this jury in the beginning and convince the one as opposed to the one holding out long enough to convince the 11. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just an it's an awful thing to put on people, I think a lot of times because it's like you're taking people away from their lives to go and do this really fucking important thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, this type of thing, like I'm missing this and I'm missing that and it, it takes precedence over whether this guy lives or dies yeah, exactly. or goes to jail yeah, or right. whatever um so yeah i mean it, it's uh it's why that that movie is so powerful it's kind of a it's a fantasy mm-hmm. but um but still it's uh it's a it's a, it's uh yeah it's something that it's a great drama it's yeah. just a good movie yeah and great acting all, all across mm-hmm. the board um it's not just 
like one or two people that are yeah great. there's Everybody's a fantastic. ton of people in this too right there was uh was it uh jack was, klugman yeah jack klugman was it r lee cobb or mm-hmm. something like that is his name um who a great character actor um lee jacob lee jacob uh martin balsam uh eg marshall um jack warden mm-hmm. ed bagley not yeah ed bagley senior yeah <laughs> so uh yeah, good movie. Uh, on to 200 Cigarettes. I never saw this. Did oh, you know? I saw it. I forgot about it pretty quickly. <laughs> Isn't this one of those like montage like vignette movies? It the, is. Yeah. yeah. It came out, I think, right in 2000. Uh, and it's about it's about New Year's Eve, basically, in Manhattan. But it's got a crazy cast, and it's got a crazy cla- cast of that era, of that 1999-2000. It's got Ben and Casey Affleck, J- Dave Chappelle, Elvis Costello makes a a cameo janine garofalo gabby hoffman kate, kate hudson katherine keener courtney love jay moore jesus martha plimpton christina ricci and paul rudd i knew christina <laughs> ricci was in it that's I, the only one i remember now, I, I, you said katherine keener i think it's katherine kellner yeah yeah, 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 yeah. but um, and harvey danger makes a uh, cameo on this <laughs> pole sitter. but no they do the uh your english beat song the sooner or later uh, save it for later i was just referencing the sin joke uh it's today's video right oh yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a type of movie though that, that came out in this era it was like it, it was i don't know what it is i don't know what launched this it was either dazed and confused or it was can't hardly wait or something like i mean obviously movies like this had happened before but to get them to the point where there was just a ton of them yeah that's what kept that, that's what i think can't hardly wait was probably the the big catalyst yeah, for yeah. this just get that huge cast and just go around and just like let's let's sort of have these vignettes and everything uh the there was even that movie trojan war you remember that yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. will friedel yeah. is going around looking for condoms yeah, yeah. uh trying to bang jennifer love hewitt the yeah, whole movie yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, there were a ton of these type of movies, but I never all saw- of them in- <laughs> involved Jennifer Love Hewitt. They, yeah, Jennifer Love Hewitt was in, was every, in, one of them. in every single one. <laughs> no, this is a fun movie. It's not, there's nothing deep about it. There's nothing meaningful about it, but it, it does have just a stunning cast when you look at it by today's standards. All right. Uh, a, a really good Stephen King adaptation, 1408. I fucking love this movie. Yeah, I do too. Is this too. the Cusack one? Yeah, it's that, uh, John Cusack and uh, Samuel L. Jackson. That's a Stephen King adaptation? Yeah. I had no idea. I think it's a, was it a short story. Yeah, it's a short yeah, story. Yeah, so Cusack uh, is one of these non-believer, you know, he he refutes all the ghost stories. He goes into all the, the most famous places of the world and, like, debunks their entire ghost stories with, you know, well, you know, that, that noise is actually pipes and, you yeah, know, that yeah. type of shit. And then he goes to this building, the 1408 room and everything. And Samuel L. Jackson's like, all right, you know, if you want to do this, whatever. And then yeah, he some tries- shit happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he tries to dissuade him. He's like, man, I'll give you, I think he like offers like a, a bottle of expensive booze or something like that. If, if you'll turn around and walk out mm-hmm. and it's so creepy. Yeah, it is so creepy. It is. I, f- I feel like I must have seen one of four or five other movies like a week before i saw this movie because i felt like the end for me and my experience of watching it was fairly telegraphed Mm -hmm. but i don't know if it's the movie's fault or if i just had seen the sixth sense or something too soon too recently yeah i know i i I know why there's there's three alternate endings to this movie okay and the one that we get is the most test audience friendly uh that 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 they they could come up with but there's three alternate endings i didn't know that the Netflix, which I think it's gone off of Netflix, but the one on Netflix I saw and it, and it ended completely different. And I was like, was that the movie that I saw in theaters? Because that I don't remember that happening mm-hmm. for the Netflix uh, version. They put that alternate ending on it. And then there's one for the UK. Oh, and then wow. there's one for other releases that they've had, too. Mm. So there's there's four different potential. Well, that, I honestly don't even know which one I saw. Then. <laughs> but I predicted it. Yeah, yeah. All right. There is one that's very predictable, and that's I think that's the the theatrical one. Probably. Right. Yeah, fourteen oh eight is great. Um, then there's Annie Hall. This is Woody. This is would would we say this is Woody Allen's best movie, or is it just his most popular? I would say it's my favorite, especially considering. I, I know I've I've always been able to say I can separate the art from the artist and all that stuff. And yes, there's been other stuff that's come out about Woody Allen from mm-hmm. Sue Yi Previn and all that stuff defending him. Uh, I I find it very hard to watch Manhattan these days because oh, yeah, of, because, because of, of the, the Mary Hemingway character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it just hits a little too close. I fucking love that movie. I love everything about that movie. Mm. 
I, I, I could not just like put it on and, and watch that and feel okay about it. Mm-hmm. Annie Hall, even though it's made by this still, you know, this this person that's an alleged sm- scumbag, <clears throat> I can watch that and I can enjoy the crap out of it because there's so many levels to it. Yeah, that it's uh, it it just doesn't have any restraints it doesn't mm. feel like this entire movie it's it's pr- i mean like all the you know it, it's grounded but then it has like all these little tangents that are thrown in there too that make the movie what it is it's so fun um it's a miracle this movie's a miracle especially considering you know we've talked about this before that they had a murder mystery in this yeah. thing the later became manhattan murder mystery um but he they you know the editor told him you got to cut this murder mystery out and, you know like so cutting that major point out of it and then still keeping it like that solid mm-hmm. is uh is it's a miracle that movie exists yeah and you're right you know I, I almost take that stuff for granted those fantasy sequences and the the way he plays with reality because i've seen it so many times but when you mention stuff like the split screen of of them going to to psychotherapy mm-hmm. with each other and and comparing the exact same response in two different contexts yeah. and the fact that she steps out of her body at one point when they're they're having sex the whole pulling the the the, the metaphysicist out of line the yeah. whole subtitles <laughs> into the thing yeah it's a, it is amazing that, that you just take that for granted but those are those are completely innocuous things that that come out or incongruous things that come out in an erstwhile like romantic comedy that you'd see in anything you know? yeah mm-hmm. the uh the that split screen thing is just is one of my favorite things just because there's the, the the same question comes up like how many times se- you have sex in a week and he's like hardly ever three times a week and then she goes all the time three <laughs> times a week <laughs> which is such a realistic mm-hmm. depiction of the ending is such a realistic depiction of actual adult human relationships. I love this movie, man. Yeah, it's um, a, it's a, it's one of my all timers yeah. for sure. Uh, then there is American Psycho. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are switching gears. <laughs> that is definitely a New York movie. Although there are there are fantasy sequences in this as well. You could compare them in that way if you, you wanted. Could make an argument. The whole goddamn thing is a fantasy yeah. sequence. I still, a man. I, I don't think I'll ever get this movie. I still don't understand this movie. I, I like still watching what- it, but I think I'm with you. Yeah. And I also don't understand why... Actually, I do take that back. I was going to say, I don't understand why it has such a, a strong cult following, but I think I know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, why, why do you think that is? Anti-hero that people actually relate to this guy? Yes. Mm-hmm. That people... Yeah, I can see that. Because it is wish fulfillment for anybody who's ever had a co-worker... They fantasized about axing to death. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think God, that's kind of part of it. It's kind of it disturbs me that that's the case, but I think that's it. We've uh, there, there are a lot of people who relate to Patrick Bateman. Yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm your because, coworker. <laughs> because you're the only person I know who could pull off that thing about Phil Collins and Genesis. <laughs> this is Susudio. <laughs> um yeah i like watching the movie i think the performances are good yeah christian bale this is his arrival really he mm-hmm. had had sort of i mean he there were people who were called bale heads before before this movie came out um <laughs> the newton boys yeah the newton boys for sure <laughs> was no. he in the newton boys or was he in newsies no, no he was McConaughey. he right? was uh, yeah um newsies wasn't it newsies it newsies, yeah. newsies okay but uh he was in empire of the sun that's yeah. where his i think that was his debut and then he was in little women that uh the winona Ryder gabriel byrne version of it uh and i remember that was the first time i remember seeing him i'd seen empire of the sun before that but he was so much younger that I didn't recognize him and everything, but people were called bail heads. And then like the American psycho really pushed him up into the forefront where he was like a guy that we go to now and everything. Now he's playing Dick Cheney. Yes. Um, That's such a great trailer. Oh, it's God. one of my favorite the, trailers. The movie of all cannot time. possibly be as good as that trailer is. That's the problem. Yeah, I know. That trailer's <laughs> cut so well. <laughs> so I don't know. The music is perfect. It's, it's the same thing as uh, the big short. Yeah. No, I got, I have optimism about it. It looks great. I'm just saying the trailer is, it's like next That's level. So good. That's probably one of the best trailers i've seen in a couple years but uh yeah american psycho is the brett easton alice uh novel and everything based on that and everything and it's got that uh, that it's got what we i think what we think of the 80s down pat Mm -hmm. you know these these guys who are like just they're just vicious fucking business sharks 
go around to the best restaurants and do cocaine all the time. Don't actually do any business. Don't do any business. <laughs> they're really concerned about how their business cards yep. look like. You know, there's a point, there's a whole segment where a guy can, comes out with his business card and, and, uh, and, and uh, Patrick Bateman is like fucking so jealous. He's apoplectic. It's so <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like I, I come to the realization his business card is better than mine. <laughs> And there's He's like, like sweat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's there's so many little throwaway lines in there where people like, you know, a guy comes out of the bathroom he's like, there's no good bathroom to do coke in here. And- <laughs> yeah. It's at like a like a like like a hotel lobby yeah. or something like that. Yeah. 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 Um but yeah, I, 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 I do like this movie and yeah, I see my, a lot of myself in Patrick Bateman. No. <laughs> uh, no, I like it. Uh, then there is the Avengers, um, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. where, you know, basically they destroy New York City. They destroy oh. the fuck out of New York, man. Mm-hmm. I was watching this the other day with my kid and, uh, I, I do love that last sequence. It's just, it's just awesome. But, it's just so convenient about how often they attack and they've got time to rest and do their witty banter and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And I mean, y- you understand how the Sokovia Accords and all that shit could happen mm-hmm. because how many people fucking died mm-hmm. in that final battle? Yeah. A, a, a lot. And yeah. that movie, we uh, as a film society, like a film going mass of people we gave that movie a total pass on it and then fucking batman or the man of steel comes out <laughs> yeah. and all those fucking people <laughs> are dead and we just pounced on that shit yeah. we we're like Zack snyder how dare you you killed millions like joss whedon didn't do the same shit yeah and they were about to fucking nuke it too i think it's i think uh it's because in the avengers it's portrayed as this there's no other way they can get they can get to these guys because that's where the aliens are attacking well there's that and then they they make sure to cut away to that sequence in the library where they get like what 12 people out of there like the bus where they rescue you know a dozen people and oh well they're okay then everybody in new york is safe. meanwhile millions of people are in there yeah but torn up you know but in man of steel it's two guys yeah and it's like come on superman can't you just fly (laughs) yeah go that way fucking wyoming and do this (laughs) you know because it would reduce the collateral damage. Um, uh, the Avengers is still one of the better uh, uh, Marvel. Uh, I totally movies. agree. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, anyway, we've talked a lot about the Avengers. Yes, we have. Uh, fuck them. Yeah, fuck the <laughs> Avengers. Fuck you for liking the Avengers. Wait, <laughs> I think um, we've gone too far. Yeah. Um, then there's Awakenings. This is the uh, Robin Williams, Robert De Niro movie. Man, this movie was all anyone could talk about for about three weeks of my life. <laughs> and then it just kind of went away and everybody nobody ever mentioned it I'm again trying to remember if i saw this because back in the early 90s there seemed to be a lot of these like mm-hmm. regarding henry yep uh people coming out of comas and, and <laughs> yeah. people be coming out of comas yeah exactly you know you had the while you were sleeping and you had oh, yeah. you yeah. know you had all these you know, these things um but uh but uh, awakenings uh i think penny marshall directed this yeah penny marshall directed this actually has a, a place in my heart because it was written by oliver sacks uh, who was a novelist and a humorist that was actually fairly close with uh, one of the guys I worked with at Vanderbilt and Northwestern mm-hmm. and uh, had some experience with schizophrenia and things like that. And what this is, is uh, people were in catatonic states essentially because of Parkinson's disease. Mm-hmm. And there was this uh, this medication called levodopa, carbidopa, or L-dopa, mm-hmm. um, which basically pulled these people out of their comas and gave them regular lives. And it was such a dramatic thing. This is a real thing. I was going to say, it's based on a real thing. Yes, yeah. I don't think the characters in the movie are real people. I don't think so. It was. It was. This was a real thing. Yeah, it was based on the the discovery and the implementation of L-Dopa, which unfortunately does lead to psychosis, but that's a whole other story. But yeah, so this, this, I've seen dramatic stuff like this actually happen. And to have, Robin Williams plays a very nuanced character in this. He does. You know, as, as a... As a uh, physician that is that does have some goofy witticisms, kind of like his Patch Adams without the nose, um, but then also has some very serious compassion for his patients. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and Robert De Niro is, I think, the first one to come out of it. I think part of that's part of the reason this movie was such. I just remember this this was all anybody talked about on my college campus for about a few weeks, and I think it was because both Robin Williams and De Niro were doing things we hadn't really seen them do much. Yep. yep. Uh, Williams playing more of a straight 
subdued role and De Niro playing the catatonic, mm -hmm. um, soft spoken, <clears throat> the, you know, the guy we have all this compassion and love yeah. for and want to just hug him instead of like the gangster. Um, I thought I remember thinking it was great. I probably haven't seen it in 20, 25 years. It's a, it's a very good movie. It's a very affecting movie, especially if you kind of have an experience of, of how how that experience is both from the patient perspective and from the caregiver's perspective and from the family's perspective. It's it's literally a new lease on life. It's a mm -hmm. resurrection and it's it's very powerful. Hmm. I may have to watch this. It's one of those movies that I think I, I definitely missed this when it came out. Yeah, it's uh, good stuff. Uh, then there is Bachelorette. Okay, I've never seen this, but you apparently have. Have you seen this? What is it? This is the one with Kirsten Dunst where everybody is awful. Oh, God, I saw 20 minutes of it. <laughs> Rebel Wilson, <laughs> Rebel uh, Wilson. Isla Fisher, yeah. Lizzie Kaplan. It's I like all those like, people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, this was uh, this was after The Hangover came out. It's a uh, girls behaving badly type of thing. They're in the Plaza Hotel or something like that for... Uh, Rebel Wilson's bachelorette party, and she's had a history of being bullied and all that stuff. And every single fucking character in this is the most unlikable character that you could you can imagine. And they try to do some sort of redemptive arc at the end, and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It's just like uh, the the rough night that came out uh, a couple years ago that was was trying to play on this and make it more comedic. Mm -hmm. It's worse than that. Oh, really? Wow. Um. So, but it, it is such good people in it that it was really surprising yeah um here's a movie that i feel like i should have seen but i didn't i remember when it came out it was like a it was like hot shit when this movie came out basquiat oh my oh God. geez this is jeffrey wright isn't jeffrey it? Yeah, wright yeah. this was sort of this is and it's not his debut but it certainly was the movie that got him uh in the forefront Put him on the map i thought yeah yeah and there's a ton of people in it michael wincott benicio del toro claire filani david bowie's in it dennis hopper mm -hmm. gary, like, gary oldman christopher walken like willem dafoe like every fucking person is in this <laughs> <laughs> movie um but uh it's uh you know it's a biopic of uh, jean-michel basquiat mm -hmm. and uh i remember when it came out it was like everybody fucking talking about it i just never fucking saw it. i don't oh, think you're so missing good. that much. oh you didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> i saw it once i saw it because everyone was talking about it and i remember thinking i was okay mm, okay like a lot of like now maybe this is just my biopic bias mm. because a biopic has to do something pretty special for me to go beyond oh it was okay yeah. yeah like even this freddie mercury thing coming up i'm like i'm probably gonna think yeah that was okay no yeah. i understand that part of it i think i i was i was drawn to his art a lot like in in high school yeah sure no i think that if you had a connection to his art because for me the movie comes out and this is the first i've ever i've ever heard of him mm -hmm. and and because he's got these connections to people like warhol and whatnot that's why he was known in the art world but he wasn't known to the general citizenry right. yeah yeah david bowie plays andy warhol mm -hmm. yeah way. That's the thing about David Bowie's movie career. Like, the characters he played are fucking awesome a lot of Yeah, them. man. Tesla, uh, fucking Warhol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, Julian Schnabel uh, directed this, and he's uh, probably best known for Diving Bell and the Butterfly, if you ever oh, saw that. Mm -hmm. uh, saw that movie. Um, then there is, uh, I saw this as a kid, Batteries Not Included. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is a Steven Spielberg-produced movie, uh, and it's also one of the hardest movies to, like, like if you ever were to actually write the title you would actually you have to put an asterisk oh, next to it and yeah. then like it's all in lowercase and shit <laughs> um uh i vaguely though remember it's it's fucking robots uh it's like alien robots yeah, alien alien robots. Robots. cocoon yeah. meets short circuit <laughs> yes <laughs> jessica you, yes yes Hume Cronin and, and Jessica Tanty. You don't get like older than that shit. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> like, I, like when you think of batteries not included, like somehow cocoon gets in there. <laughs> and I, and I agree. I fucking agree. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's oh, silly. It's a silly. Watch it. It's oh, a silly. It's, uh, this was notable for being the screenwriting debut for Brad Bird. Oh yeah, Brad Bird. You know, I saw a funny thing on Twitter the other day that somebody reminded Brad Bird of, and he commented. But apparently, there was some animated movie he did before Iron Giant, mm -hmm. and he was the writer and director. But he also did the barking for the dog <laughs> audio, and he gets paid more in residuals from the dog barking than he do does as the writer director. <laughs> wow, that's, that's funny. insane! And he responded to that. He, he awesome. confirmed it. He confirmed it again. I guess he had said it publicly before. <laughs> um, then there's the Big Short, um, obviously about the uh, the financial crisis of mm -hmm. 2008. Um, 
This or is like one of your favorite movies of the last few it years. It is. Right? It's the it's the one that I've seen the most out of anything in this decade. Mm. Uh just the way it's put together is it it moves it moves beautifully. It's got a lot of great actors and they're used right. Right. Like that's the thing that I feel like a lot of comedies or whatever are trying to do where they like let's stick all these people you love in the movie and it'll be good somehow. And it just doesn't work that way. You know, this one is scripted well. Everybody's cast perfectly. Even like Brad Pitt in a very non showy role somehow becomes is very memorable in, in the way he he does his character in this. Like mm-hmm. it's just kinda like you know, he's very no nonsense and uh, you know, he's got his principles and everything, but he's still gonna help these guys capitalize on a yeah. on a shitty thing, you know. Is this a comedy? Yes. Yeah, I think so. There's so many like like heavy themes in this that that it's hard to for me to like categorize that like just straightforward as a comedy, especially because it's Adam McKay, but it's a different type of if comedy. You want, than if you wanted to done. say dark comedy, I was going to say yeah. Yeah, it can be yeah, yeah. it can be read that way because you're talking about because there are scenes in there where they show the effects of all this. Where, mm-hmm. They one they go down to Florida and they knock on that dude's door and he's like, well, you know, I don't own this house. It's uh, somebody else that does. Is like, oh, well, uh, you, you know, you, what, he hasn't paid any, like the guy hasn't paid any of his bills or mm-hmm. whatever. And the guy's like, you, you're not telling me this guy isn't paying his rent, are you? It's like it's like this is the only place I've got and all that. These you know, like how many people it affected other than just people who owned houses? Yeah. You right. know, people who live in those houses who are just paying, like, to, to say, you know, pay, paying rent there and mm-hmm. everything. But uh, on top of that, yes, it's a comedy because, of, like, all the different things that go on there. And this is another one that has these, like, nice little tangents. It's like, you know, hey, you want to, want you know, a, a better version of what we're talking about here? Here's Margot Robbie in a bathtub. <laughs> or here's Selena Gomez. Or, you know. <laughs> I forgot about Selena Gomez. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it's just, I, I love how it's, now it's also, the other thing about it is that it, it sort of informs you of how fucking crazy things can get if things go unchecked and how, and, and you know, it's, I don't think very much has been learned from this movie, no. but, but no, you no, could, no. you could, you can watch this and at least sort of see the signs of things that are to come mm-hmm. if you, you know, if you're really paying attention, but you know. Yeah. A lot of people are not. They but, are not. Uh, then there's Birdman. Mm-hmm. Birdman is great. This is New York as fuck. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, it, only it, even if only just for the like the the way it treats the theater scene, like the Broadway stage production play, like that's a whole world mm-hmm. there that we get a, a peek at here. But I don't think the average Joe really knows about this movie. Kind of seems like everybody kind of forgot about this movie yeah it's one of those it's <laughs> well, what, what is it about this motherfucker because we just said the same thing about the revenant yeah, his yeah. next film right. which was just as acclaimed <laughs> and yet it feels like nobody talks about birdman yeah. or the revenant anymore uh i agree i don't well, know i don't know i think a lot of times it's you have so many like there i remember i i think i've run into more naysayers of birdman than i have run into people who loved it really oh, interesting yeah no kidding um, god i love this movie yeah and i don't it, a lot of times when i hear why people don't like it it's like okay i guess i can see that what but, are the reasons um i think they just think it's too too dense and it doesn't you know especially the ending of the movie is that puts them off too. the they think it's a little bit too slow they don't know what you know i mean there's a lot of things in that movie that you know if you were just to watch it on the surface there's nothing there you know a lot of times if you just watch that movie and say oh there's not really much going on it's, it seems like michael keaton's kind of an asshole and yeah what is the deal with this play why is this such a big deal that type of thing you mm. know god there's so many great things in there yeah like the i mean edward norton is just given free reign in this mm-hmm. thing to act like his to play on his reputation yeah and to also show his brilliance and to also be able to act with a boner, like yeah. just with with impunity, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's so it's so great, like. Mm-hmm. And then when you have those little downtimes, like when he's with the uh, with Emma Stone on the on the uh, the veranda and everything, it's just like it actually shows some nuance to it. There's, you're right. There's so many levels to this movie, even beyond the Michael Keaton stuff and the one shot stuff. There's just. I, I I just love digging into it. The score, like man, it's so good. Yeah, it won Best Picture. It did. Um, but yeah, I love Birdman. I can un- I guess I can understand if you don't, 
as it does can't can't it can be long and slow if you're or just too abstract uh at times but yeah we may have to do three new york episodes <laughs> maybe um, I'm just I going love, through. I love talking about it. Alphabetically, man. I'm just thinking Birdman. Yeah, <laughs> well, there's still a ways to go. <laughs> Luckily, there's some letters that aren't used as much. Right. Um, right. Then there's Boiler Room, which is sort of a great compliment to Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie has a ton of fucking people. No in kidding. It. Holy shit, does it have a ton of people mm-hmm. in it? Uh, but it's it's mainly Giovanni Ribisi, and then there's like Nikki Cott, Ben Affleck. Uh, there's uh, Ben Diesel. Ben Diesel. Um, but yeah, there's a million people in it. Uh, it's uh, this is also the story from which Wolf of Wall Street came from. Yeah, he's he's doing like the penny stocks and stuff like that, right? Yeah, uh, I can't remember if if it's Affleck that's playing. There's somebody in here that might be playing the character DiCaprio. No, oh, Jordan Balfour. Jordan Balfour. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't know if that's true, but I I believe that the actual events of this movie dovetail with interesting with wolf of wall huh. street uh but yeah it's that same type of thing they're selling stuff they're selling stuff that has no chance right. of you know and 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 it's got this there's this very like manly like you've got a you gotta have brass balls to sell this or whatever and it's like uh this movie is just sort of just came and went nobody watched it i think it's gotten a huge cult following mm-hmm. sense yeah um, it's, it's good yeah I, I the best it. scene is when He's just finally started getting good at it, and he's at home eating his breakfast, <laughs> and the guy calls to try and sell him a subscription to like a newspaper or something, oh, yeah. and gives up pretty quick, and then he just schools that guy. Yeah. He's yeah. like, you're going to give up like that? <laughs> yeah. Come on, yeah. now, let's try again. Yeah. Let's, let's do it this way. <laughs> yeah. It's freaking awesome. Uh, then there's uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, which I haven't seen in forever. Me neither. Oh, uh, it's, uh, every time it's on, I'll watch the entire thing. This is Audrey Hepburn. Yes. At her Audrey Hepburnist. That's right. Um so yeah, talk about it. Talk about it. Uh who's who's the uh, the guy George uh Papard? Yeah. Yeah, George Papard. He's a perfect foil for it because you know, you, you go back and you watch these these older movies and you think of the uh the female character as being this just kind of, you know, freewheeling but also virginal type of uh type of person to where like they're they're projected all the innocence onto and everything and holly go lightly is not that like she is she's a hustler she's precocious she goes to uh visit the mob guy in the in the in jail every week to give him the weather report Mm -hmm. and he supports her living in uh, manhattan and everything she can sleep around she can go to parties she can date whoever she wants to she doesn't want to settle down and that's the whole the whole point of it. Like even at the end, when she knows that she's fallen in love with this guy, um, she she can't bring herself to do it. She's got to leave. And uh, yeah, it's it it's such for that era. That character is monumental, and it's just it's awesome to watch. Unfortunately, these days may be more known for the Mickey Rooney um, playing an Asian or the song you think that's uh obviously that is a big thing because he's it's so racist yeah it's a it's a pretty big thing it's one of those one of those where like (laughs) yeah why didn't you get an actual asian Mm -hmm. person to do this there's a scene a pretty affecting scene and uh (laughs) this is gonna sound like i'm being stupid or funny or whatever but dragon the bruce lee story Mm -hmm. uh where he's watching the watching this movie with his wife lauren holly plays his wife in that and uh everybody's laughing in the theater breakfast tiffany's is great and everything and then the mickey rooney character shows up and he's mm. the only one in the entire theater not laughing and lauren holly t- turns to him and sees that oh yeah this is this isn't that funny mm-hmm. and uh so yeah i mean that's a that's that has become a thing about mm. this movie it's an unfortunate part of the time in which this movie was made that nobody really had that kind of a sensitivity yeah about and it. it's so and it's so stupid and an otherwise gorgeous movie with a strong female lead again i hadn't seen anything like this before Mm -hmm. i mean in in movies in this era like this Mm -hmm. um because she you know george papard is along for the ride basically he's fallen head over heels because she's the original manic pixie dream girl Mm -hmm. uh but has an edge to her and even in stuff like roman holiday where i think she won the oscar like audrey hepburn i don't think played a lot of characters like this that had Mm -hmm. an edge to them so it's i it's totally worth revisiting I know it's a classic that everybody just kind of says, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll get to that. It's worth watching. If it's on any time, throw it on. It's good stuff. It's also famously the book that George was too lazy to read, mm. and then he couldn't check the movie out because 
a family had already checked it out, so he went to their home <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and invited himself in and watched it with them. <laughs> the wife come home, comes home from work and they pause the movie and George goes to get a drink and he comes back and he's like, so uh, are we watching the movie or are we still talking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was uh, Truman Capote wrote this, didn't he? Yes, he did. And then uh, Blake Edwards directed the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, then there is A Bronx Tale. This was Robert De Niro's directorial debut. Has mm. he, what else has he done? Uh, the Good Shepherd. Oh, wow. Ugh. He may have done some others, but those are the two that I know. Do you like this movie? Uh, I, I remember liking it. Bronx Tale. Oh, you know, well, like I remember. Uh, well, to be honest, I saw it once. I saw mm. it because it was De Niro's debut. And I think I, I probably went in expecting more Goodfellas and got more This Boy's Life. It seems very much like a Scorsese clone. It looks like it. Well, it looks like it's going to be that kind of follow this kid into the life of crime. And it's much more drama than at least as my memory goes yeah. than that. And so I remember thinking it was OK. The but, uh, the the kid in this is I think his name's Lilo Broncato, who was uh, you may remember him in Crimson Tide. He's the guy who fixes the radio yeah. and all hmm. that. Uh, he, he later had he's probably more more famous now for have got for being arrested. He was he tried to rob a house or something like that i think hmm. he just recently got out of jail from that that was like how i don't know 10 15 years he hmm. was in jail for it. uh but uh i remember him being really good in it i remember one scene in it though where he's talking about how he loves the yankees and everything and de niro tells him you know like do you think any of those players down there give a fuck about you and everything <laughs> And so, like, he starts thinking about it in a different way. And he's like, and then he's like, it was the summer of 65 and the Yankees sucked and I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 uh, <That's awesome. laughs> but yeah, I remember enjoying it, but it's been since it came out since I've seen it. Yeah, me too. Uh, then there's the butterfly effect. Holy oh, shit. Oh, well, my God. One of the better Ashton Kutcher movies. <laughs> 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 it's the prettiest turd in the bowl <coughs> i don't i don't remember what I, I think i i think i was sort of like even on this movie like yeah. there were some mm-hmm. moments in it that are kind of cool i mean it's taking that whole it's is it does he have the capability of going back yes. by yeah. himself without machines yeah or anything? he can go into like his memory and change it that way um this would if the, if we were talking about it in a standard podcast format, this would be a full on wreck of warn because like Justin Timberlake's in time, there's a lot of cool ideas here. Yes. But like Justin Timberlake's in time, mm-hmm. there's a lot of bullshit in here. Yeah. too. And uh, I, I can't wholeheartedly recommend it. But it's again, like I said previously, they made a couple sequels of this thing. It's got some kind yeah. of following. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then there's uh, Michael Moore's Capitalism. I love story. Did mm. you see this? I did not. I put this in there because this is, I think, the low point of his artistry and the high point of his hubris. Okay. Where he really thought he was hot shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't remember it, ironically, doing anything at the box office. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it was probably the, the highest grossing documentary, quote unquote, of that year. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's not good. I mean, he's doing a standard thing. We all know that corporations are corrupt. We all know that this... This system of government that we're of economic government that we're under has a bunch of flaws. Tell me something I don't know, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me get back to my place. My place. Yeah, we're at uh, crimes and misdemeanors. Go ahead and start talking about some crimes and misdemeanors because I know that you love that. And I, I saw it last year. Was the last time I saw it. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. good. Good oh, movie. It's so good. I think Martin Landau was up for the Oscar. I don't think he won it until Ed Wood, right? I, I am. I think he was nominated. For oh this. man, it's it's one of those weird things where there's two stories going on. There's the Woody Allen Mia Farrow or uh, yeah Mia Farrow story, yeah, and then there's the yeah Woody Allen is like uh, trying to Alan Alda's playing this like phony fucking you know guy trying to do some sort of uh, biography right, on right, himself right. or whatever, and Mia Farrow's like in love with him but Mm -hmm. woody allen's trying to get her to stop being in love with him there's always somebody there's there's you know this at this point i guess i was i was starting to get a little fatigued which is strange this is only 89 Mm -hmm. with with him breaking up a relationship and then going to a new relationship which typically breaks up that relationship and then going back to the broken relationship from the beginning Mm -hmm. with a series of like and it's just it's just taken for granted in these movies that everybody just kind of moves on they're all in the same social circles and you know eventually they get along but 
what sets this apart is the Martin Landau storyline where he's uh, he's like a dentist or an orthodontist or mm. something like that that almost accidentally himself into you know killing his wife because of an affair mm-hmm. and you think you know everything is going downhill for this guy he's getting he recompense kill, and all that stuff does he kill the wife or the he kills the girlfriend yeah yeah that, yeah, that, yeah. yeah he uh the the guy from law and order jerry orbach jerry orbach yeah um lumiere yeah exactly yeah, yeah. fucking crazy <laughs> yeah. uh but yeah so he goes through and kills the the mistress and you think and he is racked with guilt mm-hmm. at this point he's like hey, this is just the the worst thing in the world and eventually, he gets no recompense from it. He mm-hmm. gets no no uh, no uh, cosmic uh, or, or karmic retribution. He just goes about his life, and he ends up being a happy person. Yeah, and living a fulfilling life. And you got to imagine that's how the world is. And, yeah. and it it really does strike that moral relativism, and it's it's fascinating to watch. I I love this. Movie. I am a little. T- I'm sorry. No, I am I'm- a little troubled how fascinated Woody Allen seems to be with regular people doing murder. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even that Joaquin Phoenix uh, Emma Stone movie, Nobody Saw But Me, is about a regular guy doing murder. What was the that? I can't remember it. Disenfranchised Man. It's something along those lines. The, that was a Woody Allen movie? I think it's Woody Allen. How did I miss that? It starts with an I, I think. The Inscrutable Man. The ins- Irrational Man. Irrational Man. Oh. Wow. That's Woody Allen, right? Well, yep. well <clears throat> Match Point, too. Match is, Point. Uh, Matt Hatton. Murder Mystery. Right. Uh, it just feels like... Maybe he spent more time thinking about killing his neighbors than the average person. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Like my brother and I, when we were kids, we, my, my my dad liked Matlock and Murder, She Rose. So my mm-hmm. brother and I used to joke, you know, if we ever commit murder, we're going to do it right. We're not going to get <laughs> mm-hmm. caught. Now, granted, that's probably a pretty disturbing story in and of itself, <laughs> that two preacher's kids are having conversations like that. Uh, but we grew out of that. Right. And I feel like Woody <laughs> Allen maybe didn't. That's yeah. true. That's true. Uh, but no, that's a that is a great movie. And, th- you know, there's... There's really no real connecting tissue with those two stories. Not at all. You, the the the, the, very the cover of the the uh, you know the video or whatever the cover of this movie uh, the video cover of this movie is pretty much the only time that Woody Allen and Martin Lando. I believe it is the is, only. It time. is the only time, and it's it's interesting because it doesn't feel disconnected though because there are you know a little bits of parallels because they're both in the Upper East Side or Upper West Side or whatever kind of in the same social circle mm-hmm. you could believe that this is all taking place in an insular environment but yeah no they're completely separated yeah uh then there's the cotton club i've never seen this francis oh, ford coppola movie never seen it either richard oh. gear yeah it's it's a visually beautiful movie it's yeah. about the cotton club up in harlem where uh it's run by the mob and all that stuff uh there's a lot of real life mobster characters in this Gregory Hines, I, I I really like Gregory Hines. Mm-hmm. He was uh, he was so char- He's dead now, right? Uh, yes, I think, uh, I think a long time ago. In yeah, fact. yeah. I made that joke in a recent video about because that 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 little girl, that asshole at the end of Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom, when she pushes that button and lets <laughs> those dinosaurs out, she's like they're alive, like me. And I wrote that joke about well, shit, girl, silverfish are alive. <laughs> John Tesh is alive, yeah. and somebody tweeted. John Tesh is alive, and for like a moment, I was like, "Oh uh, fuck, yeah. is he dead?" And I wrote that joke, and so I had to go Google it, and no, he's still alive. What's funny though is even if he wasn't, <laughs> it still works. It still works. Uh, uh, no, he died in 2003 of liver cancer. Okay. <laughs> Gregory Hines is so charming. He had that one of there's th- there was this era of uh, Hollywood stars that could actually dance, mm. that could tap dance really well. Tony Danza is one yeah. of them. Gregory Hines. Uh, and so he was perfect for this. Richard Gere is super cool. Uh, it's it, there's not a lot of depth to this movie, especially relative to other Coppola movies, but it's it's really good. Yeah. Uh, then there's a uh, Cruel Intentions. Fuck, baby. Oh, oh my god. Now baby. This, is not this, is this well. Is this the Wreck-A-Warniest movie of all time? God, yes, because I think it might be. Mm-hmm. You know what? We just I we just that's a future episode. <laughs> We're all going to bring contenders for a, a cage match for record warning like movie it. ever because like this it. movie is watchable as fuck. Yeah, it really is. It's dangerous liaisons for kids, basically. Yep. <laughs> rich kids. Yeah, for rich kids. Yeah. Um, uh, Ryan Philippe, Reese Witherspoon, um, Sarah Michelle Geller, and, and who maybe this might be outside of Buffy, her best. Work. Oh, it's so juicy! Oh, Man, she's she so fucking, fucking evil. In digs this. Yeah. into this thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, she probably was just uh, just tired enough of playing the good guy from oh, Buffy sure. all that time. Yeah. And she just she eats it up. 
Oh my god! Like it's probably the least believable relationship in the entire film is her and Ryan Phillippe's <laughs> yeah. relationship. But I don't care. Those scenes are fun as hell. <laughs> they're like what are they? Are they they're like half brother. Yeah, they're like they're step, step brothers. They're step oh, they're step. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And and I, I'll I'll never forget Sarah Michelle Gell because there's a point where she like you know is doing the dangerous liaisons thing where he's trying to get Reese Witherspoon in bed, and if he does that, then he'll finally get to sleep with Sarah Michelle Geller and all that. Mm-hmm. And there's the point where he's like not into it anymore, and she's like I. I want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. It also has uh, Selma Blair in it. Yep. Oh, Love my me God. some Selma She's Blair. So fucking goofy. Yeah. Oh, it's it's uh, and it's got that that famous kiss between the the two of them. Yeah, which didn't that like didn't MTV best kiss or I something think, yeah, like I think didn't they did. win that if it was Yeah, they, or... I I believe not only did they win, I believe they kissed again on stage accepting the award. Didn't yeah. They? Mm-hmm. This is uh, so. This came out in 1998 or 1999. I think it was 99. Uh, this came out right at the perfect horny high school college transition for me. Yeah, and I fucking loved it. And then yeah. you go back and watch it now, and it's like, ah. oh, it's cringy, but it's, it's still <laughs> it's still fun, man. Yeah. I would if it was on the TV guy and I was slipping by, I would stop. There's and a, there's a reason this story has been remade so many times. Is that it's a it's an interesting story. It's silly. But it's also like, you know, it, it, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch Uma Thurman be in that Selma Blair role with yeah. John Malkovich. It's fun. To, the, there was a, one called Valmont that yeah. came out. Uh, Which might be good. better than Dan- Dangerous Liaisons. You think? One of them has yeah. Colin Firth in it. Yeah. That's supposed to be uh, pretty good. The Va- Valmont was uh, Milo Schwarman. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. I need to watch that again. Both of them are good, though. Yeah. That's another point for me, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Then there's uh, Eddie Murphy Raw. That, yeah. I believe this is Madison Square Garden. Uh, So this came after Delirious. Yeah. Delirious was first. Delirious was first. The Delirious, I believe, was like 82, 83, somewhere around there. What do you this like This was 87. Uh, Delirious. Do you really? Yeah, I think so. Man, Raw is so fucking hilarious. Raw is. Yeah. They both they yeah, they both are. Yeah, I I don't know. I think I've seen Raw more. I have too. Yeah. Uh but um yeah, I mean just I mean again, we we're, we do get into these dicey things. Eddie Murphy's stand up act back in the 80s was if you watch it with 2018 eyes, mm-hmm. not anything that anybody would be able to get away with today. Mhm. Uh, even stand-up comics who get away with that type of stuff probably wouldn't be able to get away with what Eddie Murphy did. Nope. However, uh, it is one of his funniest stand-up acts that you'll ever see. And yeah, especially it, the stuff like, is this is yeah, this is definitely the one where he talks about uh, taking Brooke Shields to the to the Grammys. No, no, it was Michael Jackson taking Brooke Shields. He's like, I knew, I knew that you guys like Mike. Like, like white guys didn't care what Michael Jackson did when he took Brooke Shields to the Grammy. He's like, because he's like, he's like, if you, if I took Brooke Shields to the Grammys, you'd lose your damn mind. <laughs> cause, cause you know, you know, Brooke would get fucked that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god (laughs) uh but yes eddie murphy raw also has that opening i think samuel l jackson is in the beginning of that uh the little opening where Mm. he where it's 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 a a skit of like little eddie murphy like entertaining his family and samuel l jackson's like one of the one of the people that's in that and everything and then he later was in coming to america that's right uh but uh yeah eddie murphy raw is great it's got that great bit about the his mom making him a bur- hamburger that's better than McDonald's. He's like, better than McDonald's. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'll make you a better, <laughs> better burger than McDonald's. She starts chopping up, you know, green peppers <laughs> and onions. That doesn't look like a McDonald's burger. <laughs> She's like, it's like better. And you got pink stuff flying over the bread, like flying all over the place. It's fucking good. And it's like it's talking about the kids from the neighborhood yeah. coming around with their McDonald's. I got yeah. McDonald's. <laughs> I got McDonald's. What about you, Eddie? And you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, after that, 1996's Eraser. Oh, God. Old Schwarzenegger movie. Uh, saw it once. I well, did, too. Would like to take it back. Yeah. <laughs> you'd like With, to erase yes, it? Yes, you'd like I, to erase I could, it. I could, I could better invest the, that hour and a half today. Yeah, it's um, not a good movie. No. It's not even worth talking about. Nope. I think one of the Vanessa Williams is, is in that movie. <laughs> Yes, it, it it was Vanessa Williams, former Miss America, and all that when she was in this. Uh, yes, you were all right. The what? Yeah, which one is it? Vanessa Williams or Vanessa L. Williams? I don't know. Duh. Is it Michael Jordan or Michael B. Jordan? Yeah. Um. Then there is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. We've obviously talked about this a lot. Great movie. 
Great movie. Yeah, and this is a more, this is a very New York movie, but it's more of like a Greenwich Village, mm-hmm. Lower East Side type of New York movie. Might as well be in a different, quote, city, even though it's all in the same borough, you know? Yeah. But, um, so good. We have recommended Eternal Sunshine on the Spotless Mind a million times. You must go watch that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Finding Forrester. <laughs> Oh, wow. you're the man now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> now, dog. That is literally all this movie is known for. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's uh, he's essentially playing J.D. Salinger, right? I guess I don't, he's I don't a know. reclusive writer and he develops a relationship with the basketball guy. Mm-hmm. The end. You don't need to watch a movie for that. Uh, I, I didn't like this movie. Eh, it was all right. It's it's no like this Wonder is, Boys, uh, but it's it's a good. I believe movie. this is Gus Van Sant too. Yeah, Gus Van Sant yep. did this right after uh, Good Will Hunting. This was like the mm-hmm. follow up. I think the- I meant, I think that's the problem I had with it is that he went from that Robin Williams Matt Damon relationship right to a movie that tried to have the same kind of cantankerous like yeah. the two people that don't really want to be because he's like gets in trouble. Yeah, and has to go like be his ward or something i forget why but he's like not he doesn't want to be in sean connery's apartment mm. he has to be it's like some kind of punishment like you got in trouble you broke something now go help the reclusive guy type up his i don't know mm. you, um. you want me to stop talking to <laughs> <laughs> uh oh yeah friday the 13th part eight jason takes manhattan <laughs> <laughs> okay we can move on uh, uh, yeah this is a, uh, I, I never saw this i saw it and uh it was uh there's there was something watchable about it for me maybe it was in a different setting and stuff like that but there was he was stalking people through you know the perils of manhattan and not like slick new manhattan like still on the the transition like 70s manhattan yeah it, it, wasn't, it wasn't 70s manhattan either it was it was like right in the middle yeah, of it that half thing. The, 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 when they shot ghost yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly uh no is it i believe this is in the trailer isn't there a part where somebody's like hey there's a maniac going around killing people it's like welcome to new york yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh then there's uh ghostbusters all all of the ghostbusters have been shot in new york yeah uh the original ghostbusters is one of the best what is it wouldn't say best movie of all time maybe Mm, okay so i would say best comedy for sure one of the best comedies of all time when i used to do the flick chart thing Mm -hmm. a lot uh had a had a boring job and used to do that basically for eight hours a day Mm -hmm. and ghostbusters trended into the top five for me every time okay just just however because i would watch that over 99% 99% of films mm-hmm. and I think it's just it's so well made the humor is so on point the performances are great effects are dated uh, but that's really the only knock that I have on it uh, mm-hmm. everything else is just pitch perfect yeah it's uh the, the effects are like one of those combinations of like they show like the you know like they show the dog and it's like oh okay that's a real thing they actually made that shit and then anytime it moves <laughs> you see the, the green yeah, around you see it. like the halo <laughs> of shit around it and everything um this there's hardly anything bad about this movie nope. i don't think there's anything bad about the first ghostbusters um uh <laughs> the, when i went to the symphony the other night the the first chair violins are really really good in the national symphony mm-hmm. and i always come back to like pete thankman after uh sigourney weaver comes out he's like i watched you practice you were the best in your row yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there speaking of which there's that that's one of my favorite parts of ghostbusters is not even a funny part it's when marshmallow man first arrives uh-huh. and there's that that violin stinger that comes in as he as you know that you know that comes in as you see like you hear something you're like what's going on <laughs> yeah. and then you just see his face like uh, just barely above the buildings or whatever walking <laughs> through there and you're like what the fuck is that marshmallow man man <laughs> the, the, have we seen anything fucking like that <laughs> just popped in there yeah, yeah i mean that's fucking insane i don't even know if movies would make something like that i don't anymore. know well the the movie itself was supposed to be even more fucking insane before because it was supposed to have belushi in it yeah, and yeah. all that and they were like going through time and all this other mm-hmm. fucking nonsense that was happening that's one of those that you're like it's a miracle that movie got made yep. the way it got made uh ghostbusters 2 i hate i know that uh i know that uh, you really hate it yeah oh man i like that movie i haven't seen it in forever but i hated it oh it's got peter mcnichol peter mcnichol so great yeah vigo yeah and vigo's voice is max von cito oh yeah Yeah. and then uh obviously the, uh, the actor who is in the painting 
didn't know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and found out at the premiere that they had overdubbed his voice and he walked out. He was pissed because <laughs> they didn't tell him they were going to Wow, do it. that yeah. sucks. Anyway, there's a little Ghostbusters <laughs> 2 You are going it. to be the wife of the eternal God. <laughs> Doesn't that sound nice? <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll give that another chance someday. Oh, it's fun. The uh, the remake obviously sucked. Yes. Uh, then there's uh, okay. I know that Jeremy has seen the TV sh- the show the TV show Girlfriend Experience. Did you ever see the Sasha Gray movie? Actually, I saw the Sasha Gray movie when it came out. Uh, okay, b- before the show. And this is Soderbergh, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, and it's one of the the show is one of the strangest. Like I don't even know why they decided to pay Soderbergh money to adapt. Like it's nothing at all. Like, well, the show came after the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's I, I don't. There's such a thin tie there, and nobody fucking saw the Sasha Gray movie anyway. Did so you why, like it at all? The Sasha Gray movie? Yeah. No, it was fucking terrible. It's, it's a slog boring. and a half. Yeah, it's completely. But how like, do you make a fucking? Hey, <laughs> why don't you do some improv, chick who can't act? <laughs> <laughs> fuck somebody. Just fuck somebody. Yeah. You're good at fucking I mean, somebody. No, it's, it's awful. It's awful. That's why when the show was announced, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? But like, you it, like the show, right? The show is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 just, it's not this. There's mm. no reason for them to have the same name at all. Mm. Uh, and no, this movie is unwatchable. Yeah, it is. Uh, then we come to one of the best movies of all time, The Godfather. Ooh, uh, man. Every time you watch The Godfather, there's, I mean, it's, uh, there's either you find more about it that enriches the experience, which is always another good um, uh, marker of a good movie mm-hmm. or a great movie. Um, for me, it's always been the plot of this movie, like the plot of it, the way everything is set up and the characters of it and everything. That's always been my number one thing about this. Like just all the things that happen in this movie make sense. Yeah. You know, that's not yeah. just like it's not like just dreamed up out of nowhere. This is the the shit that happens in The Godfather makes sense and they're all dramatic and they're all good and you know mm-hmm. um and they they complicate things and they make more things out of it and everything i love the fucking godfather it's amazing where michael starts <clears throat> you know he almost want to see if if there were going to be another movie made of the godfather saga i would much rather x3 and see a prequel of michael going in because you know they have that scene at the end of i think godfather 2 mm-hmm. of the family all together at the dinner mm-hmm. table yeah, where yeah. he announces that he's going to college mm-hmm. or he's or he's joining the military joining the military mm-hmm. yeah I would love to see those years, mm-hmm. like how what happens with Vito during the time that Michael's gone. He's still pining for him. What Michael does over there, because when he comes back in full uniform, it's interesting because you'd think that you know, okay, it's a newish girlfriend with Kay. He tells her the whole thing. Like mm-hmm. he's like, "This is my family. It's not me." But you know, my family is a bunch of fucking mobsters. But <laughs> you can tell right off at the beginning how much he admires what his family does, and like if if. K has the exact same reaction that we do when he's telling the story about his dad. It's a true story. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Just not yeah. shying away from it. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's it's always been an endearing thing about that Michael Corleone character because he's the guy. He's the he's the Corleone that made good. He's the good kid. Blah blah blah. But he wants to be in. Man, he wants. He does. To- it's such it's such a conflict because. I've mentioned this before in the Godfather saga. There's a deleted scene where before they go into the consigliere's room where he's dying, where uh, Vito tells Michael because he hasn't seen him in forever. He's like, when this is over, I want you to come talk to me because I want to figure out what your next steps are. And that always I really wish that that was in there before, because it's so conflicting to me how Vito and Michael wanted this to go down because Vito was super disappointed when Michael said he was going to the the service and everything. But then when he comes back, he welcomes him with open arms. But then he tells him later on, I never wanted any of this for you. I wanted you to be Senator Corleone Mm -hmm. or Governor Corleone. So I don't understand really what that relationship is so complicated. Like, what do they want? Does he really want in? Did he want in the whole time? I always kind of assumed that he wanted him to be Senator Corleone just so the family would have more influence. And legitimacy, right? Not Well, yeah, and not. I I never took that to be like a selfless desire for Michael's own trajectory. I always took that as his father's selfish desire for Michael. We want you out of the family because it will legitimize us because and that will benefit me. I never took it to be. I I just made maybe this is my own. No, no, no. (laughs) I don't know. It's like it's like the thing with Frank Pantangeli. It's there's so many different ways that you can look at this. Yeah. And nobody's wrong. Right. 
Uh, that's interesting. I'm going to think about that the next time, which will probably be within a week <laughs> that I watch this again. Yeah, I feel like the, I mean, I feel like, again, I probably know this movie half as well as you guys do, but I always felt like, you know, the, the reason Michael was the one on that trajectory was because he was the youngest, right? So Sonny mm. was always going to be the heir apparent, and there was another brother in between, and Michael, well, this is the one we'll legitimize. Well, he, he'll go straight. I never really felt much like Michael himself was, like, pure of motive. Like, interesting. I don't want to be part of the crime, because he doesn't take much to get him back into it. No, I mean, he's the one that suggests offing the, yeah. the police commission. Yeah. It's like, we're talking about a bad cop, we're talking about a dirty cop. That's why I think he's always wanted to be in it from minute one. That story he tells Kay at the beginning is what makes me think that. Because yeah. mm-hmm. he tells it with admiration. He doesn't say, yeah. eh, you know, when my dad, you know, kind of did. He wouldn't even tell that story if he... That's interesting yeah. because... It's it's crazy. It doesn't ever show Michael's wedding because it jumps forward for so long after the the wedding, Connie's wedding. Mm-hmm. It jumps forward all the way to Christmas, which is, I think it's like the following year, mm-hmm. where he's steadfastly still refused to become part of the family. It takes Vito being shot for him to come back mm-hmm. and say, I'm with well, you, Well, he's Pop. also having to go against what his dad wishes yeah. happens, too. So it may, he may be avoiding it because that's just the way he's been brought up but yeah. once the shooting happens that's when he's like all right it's fucking on now yeah yeah oh yeah you know um we could talk about the godfather yes. the whole <laughs> fucking episode let's move on to another woody allen movie hannah and her sisters i i've seen this once and i i remember liking it but i don't remember much about it uh this is one of his best uh by far mm-hmm. um this is a thanksgiving movie strangely enough uh starts at thanksgiving and then comes back this is another one where it's uh, Mia Farrow, uh, Carrie Fisher, Barbara Hershey, um, Max von Sydow is in this too, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's all intertwined relationship. One wants to go uh, in and carouse with somebody else's husband, uh, the other one is got the side piece, and it, it's just a whole complicated thing. Michael Caine is is at the the center of a lot of this stuff too. Um, it it really does focus on the female perspective, even though it's from a male gaze, and it's mm-hmm. weird to say that. But these are probably the strongest female characters he has until Blue Jasmine. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it's re- it's really good. It's it's a bit of an atypical way to tell a Woody Allen movie, but you can tell it's a Woody Allen. Movie. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, then there's Harlem Nights, which uh, that was the movie that got Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, and Red Fox all in the same movie. I've never seen it. It was directed by Eddie Murray. Eddie, oh, oh, this Eddie is Murray? yeah, Eddie Murray. <laughs> yes, Eddie Murphy. The Baltimore Rip- Oriole Rip- Rip- written by Cal Ripken. <laughs> yes, and the key grip was Al Bunbury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yes, that's a real Oriole. From yes, that. it is nice. Yeah, um, for the non-baseball. Uh, did you, you see this Harlem is the Nights? straight oh, yeah. up. Like gangster Eddie yep. Murphy, right? Yeah, it's, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. I'd rather watch Vampire in Brooklyn. <laughs> it's crazy. You had all these. I know, but it's it's straight up. It's like more drama than it is comedy. Yeah. And it's like you get fucking Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, and Red Fox together. Are you fucking serious? And you make a crime drama. Yes. Yeah, that no, oh, makes no on, sense. Man. Yeah. Uh, then there's Hoodlum, which I know I've seen this movie. Oh, yeah. Um, Pretty good. 1997 movie with Lawrence Fishburne, Tim Roth, Vanessa Williams. Yep. Oh. Andy with or Garcia. without the L. Without the L. <laughs> it's, it's always going to be without uh, the L. It's directed by Bill Duke. Bill Duke is, uh, he's one of those actors. If I showed him to you, you'd know who I'm talking about. But he directed this. I, huh. I think I saw this, but I can't remember a damn oh, thing. Oh, no, this is, uh, this is another 1930 Harlem gangster I was going to say, he's Same playing, thing. Fishburne's playing Bumpy. Bumpy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And he's been... That's that's been a character in more recent Bumpy films. Johnson, yeah. yeah. Um, it's got all those characters, Lucky Luciano, and like uh, all those mob uh, characters, uh, but it focuses more on from Lawrence Fishburne's point of view, and I I liked it. I yeah. thought it was fine. I remember thinking it was all right. Yeah. Uh, Inside Man, that's the uh, Spike Lee movie with Denzel Washington and Clive Owen. Uh, great heist movie. Yep. Uh, great, great both sides of the heist movie. Like we're seeing the the uh the interrogator side of it and them trying to figure out what's going on and you have on the on the other side some just devious dealings going on that are that i you know it's one of those i don't want to describe too much if you haven't seen it because it's it's a movie that's got some some good uh twists and turns honestly it. if i didn't think it would incite all kinds of a riot i would probably say this is the best spike lee movie mm. 
it you is know, it is up there. I can't put it above do the right thing. I don't think. I, that's where that's where I would get the riot. And I think do the right thing is fantastic. I'm not trying to slight it mm. at all. I don't think that's a how dare you type of thing, though. I mean, if you like Inside Man better then so be it no no there's an argument to be made for sure because it and it doesn't feel like a spike lee movie except for you know the stuff with uh with denzel and especially like getting a translator off the street and stuff like that and his background there's a couple of things that that remind you that it's a spike lee but i think that may be it that's why i would think was afraid of backlash backlash is that it's the least spike lee movie that he's probably made but it's my favorite. So basically, I'm saying I don't like Spike Lee movies. It's not really what I mean. No, no, no. I, uh, I just said that the heist angle, but it's not just. A, I feel like most heist movies are heist movies, and he does something original here. Where there's a whole, like you talked about, we see both sides: the cops and the criminals in the bank. Then there's a whole third side with Jodie Foster shows yeah, up, and yeah, you're yeah, like, and what Christopher the fuck? Plummer, yeah. Who do I believe? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I love this movie. Yeah, I, yeah, this is great. You don't want to root for Christopher Plummer or Jodie Foster at all. But you kind of find yourself well, doing, especially yeah. once you once you find out what it is. Yes, yeah. then then it's harder to root for. Yeah. So uh, we haven't talked about these guys for a while, but we're back on some Mubi. Yeah, baby. Mubi. Mubi.com. I am in love with Mubi. I'm, yeah. I'm serious. It's not just because you know this is this is a relationship that we've had for a while, but we've had this relationship because we really really enjoy the product. It's a streaming service, but it's curated. It's it's uh, full of movies that you, maybe you've never even heard of, some that you have heard of that thought you didn't like, like me, mm-hmm. and a movie called Manhunter. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. Manhunter. Which is, which is based on uh, the Red Dragon Hannibal Lecter That movie thing. could not have more man in it, by the way. That's right. Michael Mann directed it. <laughs> it's very manly. Yes. Uh, I watched Manhunter on Mubi. I've have always hated this movie. Yeah. I, I hated William Peterson's performance. <laughs> oh. I thought it was over the top. I thought it was stupid. I saw Brian Cox's Hannibal Lecter after I saw Anthony Hopkins, so it was ruined for me. Mm-hmm. Went back and watched it again. That's a really good fucking If movie. you can mm-hmm. get space from... That's the problem. Yeah. Because Hopkins as Lecter is... There's there's never going to be a character that's more iconic in film, mm-hmm. maybe as iconic, but that is it's up there and you can't the first couple times you see Manhunter, if you're seeing it after Silence of the Lambs, which is most people are, right, mm-hmm. um, you, you can't separate that. You carry that baggage in and it's it's hard not to compare. I'm even a big, big Red Dragon apologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, me too. And think Ed Norton is good in that. Ray Fiennes is great in that. Uh, of course, Hopkins is in that briefly, um, but. And again, uh, Manhunter and Red Dragon have so many of the same beats. Like yeah. Dialogue. Yeah, almost word exact. For word. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Manhunter in a while. Is this an early Joan Allen? You're talking about the one that plays the the blind girl. Yeah, it is Joan it Allen. It is Joan Allen. Yeah, yeah. Joan Allen is like, this is like one of her first movies. Um, yeah, no, that was good. That was a good pull. Yeah, um, because I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I think what you were leading to is Brian Cox is actually pretty awesome. He's very like good. <laughs> he's very good. And, you know, Brian Cox, I think you forget that he's because i the last time i went back and watched manhunter i forget because he's only really in the beginning mm-hmm. of this movie and then it's really much more about you know, is it the tooth fairy yeah yeah um i think it's great now i've never i never hated it but the first time i saw it i did sort of file it in this uh tv version of yeah. hannibal lecter and this kind of a story because again i was so fresh off of silence of the lambs and you, hopkins is impeccable in that role but yeah i think manhunter rules yeah. i almost don't want to to ever watch red dragon again now because <laughs> um, when you do kind of get some space from hopkins and go back into this world uh from this interpretation it's really really cool mm-hmm. and this is all part of a horrific october that yeah, they're yeah. doing now movie is not just playing horror movies right. this, this month but they do have a theme of october you know uh, horror movies pontypool from canada is one uh, george a romero season of the witch mm-hmm. not the nicholas cage version that came <laughs> seven years before uh but uh but yeah, um, uh, those are a, a couple of the ones, but you've been watching some others that are not uh, horrific, oh, like man. Claude Chabrol's like, little thing that they put on there. I'm falling back in love with uh, with French cinema again, and well, Claude Chabrol... French cinema's awesome. It really is. I mean, it's it's like where you take like the most interesting, in this case, uh, watch this movie called Bridesmaid, <clears throat> or The Bridesmaid, and it's it's taken like, you know, a almost campy uh, erotic thriller and just making it 30% better than what you would find in American cinema. 
just be, there's a little bit of like more reverence thrown in. There's a little bit more humor in there. There's a lot more fleshed out characters and it's just awesome. This was one that really knocked my socks off. It's, it's really just kind of a straightforward on the surface of it narrative of uh, a guy meeting a, a, a bridesmaid of his, uh, his uh, sister's wedding and they form this crazy affair that goes into crazy directions but it's it's just so well performed. It's so well shot. It's so well executed that I want to watch like everything this guy. And they've got a couple more uh, Chabral uh, movies on there too that I'm going to check out. And that's another just cool thing is like if they find a director to like they'll they'll usually give you like three or four of their yeah, movies yeah, yeah. and everything. So if you like that one, maybe you'll like this one and this one. That's how I saw a whole bunch of. Uh, um, God, what Louis Buñuel? Lu, yeah, Louis Buñuel movies. Yeah. Uh, because I saw like four or five, and there's a lot of those people that you you never heard of before, but they had these distinguished careers. Movies that a lot of times didn't come over to the states, so that's mm-hmm. a good thing. Yeah, a lot of podcasts will do ads like crazy, even to the point where they're just rattling off a dozen sponsors, <laughs> and we're a lot more picky. For a bunch of reasons, but one of them is that we want to actually be able to be authentically enthusiastic about the things we're trying to quote unquote sell you. Uh, and it's a lot easier to be enthusiastic about something like Mubi than it is something like foot gel. <laughs> yes. Uh, is that even a thing? I just it, made it, it up. It is. I hope not. It's, it's, foot it's, gel. They'll never get them. The yeah. new line from <laughs> Tommy Hilfiger. We just found um, out that foot gel is a billion dollar company. <laughs> but let me let me tell you how much we like Mubi. When they came back to us to do another round of, of ads with us on the podcast, they sent us three codes to log in <laughs> for free access. Two of the three of us, Barrett and Chris, didn't need them because they have already <laughs> yep. become full-time members of Mubi because of the experience the first time out uh, and i think uh, the, the reason i want to tell you that is not to toot our own horn but to toot movies horn this is how much that these two guys loved this service they signed up whether movie was ever going to come back to us again yeah um and so i think that should say something to you if you are a film buff you want to expand your horizons there's a new film every day mm-hmm. uh, you basically have 60 films over the course of a 30-day period that you get to give a shot to and that 30 days is how much um, uh, that first 30 days is absolutely free. Oh, wow. I was yeah. already digging in my wallet. But. Yeah. And if you're like a true cinephile, you can watch 60 movies in that time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and you're going to be, you're going to have your mind blown. You're going to laugh. You're going to probably cry. It's just, it's really, really interesting stuff in there. Even though there's a, there's a huge variety, you're going to find something out of every one of them. Absolutely. So sign up, go to Mubi.com, M-U-B-I.com slash cinema sins. Go to that direct URL and you will get a 30 day free trial and man, dive in. It's it's going to be worth it. I think you'll really, really dig it. Uh, the Hours, which is the uh, Virginia Wolf biopic. Yeah. Essentially. Nicole Kidman won the Oscar. I keep this. flipping past this on the TV guide. That's all I have to say. About it. Um, is it good? Yes, it's yes. pretentious as shit. It is. It is. Um, so I remember. It's one of those movies where you, you know, there's certain scenes that come up, and you're like, "God damn, how <laughs> fucking heavy do you have to be on this shit?" Um, but, uh, but Nicole Kidman, Julianne Moore, and uh, there's another awesome Meryl Streep's in it. Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. Yeah. I somehow forgot Meryl Streep. <laughs> um but some other actress i can't quite pick put, he, put her name on right yeah uh just just a legendary one um but uh yeah it's a it's a i guess it's the story about how this uh mrs dalloway affects three generations right. of women and everything and and uh you know and but yeah nicole kidman's got some sort of like nose prosthetic on because she's whatever. virginia because she's right, virginia yeah. wolf yeah but uh i don't remember everything about it it i remember it being good yeah. it's just like it's just one of those movies you got to be prepared for like <sighs> really yeah yep. okay and this is the type of movie we're watching this is real fucking heavy dramatic symbolic mm-hmm. type of shit mm. um i'll so, keep flipping past it <laughs> yeah uh stephen daldry who did billy elliot and uh the reader and extremely loud and incredibly close there you go oh, this movie um and then there's jungle the jungle what the fuck <laughs> You should have even. You should have just skipped this. That's a Tim Allen movie, yeah, right? It is. I saw this in the theater, man. Oh, this was actually the beginning of the end. 
I mean, because he his movies had done like Toy Story and Santa Claus. Santa Claus yep. were successes, and then he kind of flexed a little too much. <laughs> yeah, and, and we started getting I'm, Jungle to Jungle <laughs> and Big Bully or whatever the one was. Um, yeah, not good. I'm trying know. to think if this movie tanked or did well. It, okay, it made sixty million. But this is like my son is a jungle kid, yeah. and I'm going to bring him to New York. To the yeah. urban jungle. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, then there's another Spike Lee movie, Jungle Fever. I don't think I've ever seen this. Oh, oh really? This is Annabella Asiora and uh, Wesley, Wesley, Wesley Snipes. Snipes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sam and Jackson's in it, too, though, right? I'm sure he I is. I believe He's so. In almost all of them. The, you think Do the Right Thing he hammers you over the head with race issues. This one really smacks you in the face with it. It's almost like he went after Do the Right Thing and said, I'm going to turn hard into that and do even more. Now, I still really like this movie. I do, too. Uh, and it, it probably shows us a reality that not all of us are confronted by. Yeah. Even when we're in mixed race relationships. Uh, but this goes this goes very heavy handed. And again, when Spike Lee goes heavy handed like Black Klansman, I'm usually still on board. Mm -hmm. Is it gauche to say this this term uh, in any sort of way? <laughs> I I wouldn't. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, I, I would. I would. Stay but away I think from it this. was pretty much bandied about when this movie came out. Like if you if there was any sort of interracial relationship, sure. you just that's what you called it. Uh, but now I think it's uh, yeah, it's not uh, anything. Samuel L. Jackson plays Gator Purify. That is his name. Oh, is he the? Uh, he is the brother of Wesley Snipes. Okay. Yes, and uh, uh, the Ozzy Davis plays their their father, mm -hmm. and uh, he's like a, a puritanical reverend, actually. Mm -hmm. And nobody's happy with anybody in this movie because Annabelle is yours with a white guy, and then she gets with Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes is with a black woman, and then he gets with her, and then ev everybody from every race is offended, is insulted is very much inserting themselves into their lives and it's it's good it's a really good movie i'll have to check this out um it's just it's one of the few that i haven't seen of spike lee there's uh keeping the faith that's the edward norton ben stiller jenna elfman elfman movie that's not bad not bad at all edward norton directed this yeah, i yeah. believe uh, yeah it's about 30 minutes too long Easy. yeah and yeah, i'm yeah. gonna defend this movie probably stronger than any of you will because i like it a <laughs> no lot. i i liked it okay what so, so ben stiller is a is a rabbi mm -hmm. and uh edward norton is a catholic priest yep. who cannot date right um so and but they're both in love with jenna elfman as anyone would be right yeah, man yeah and they all grew up together they're childhood friends um it doesn't hit it doesn't hit the way it wants to and the way it thinks it's gonna hit and it ultimately pulls a lot of the punches you might think a romantic uh, you you might think a love triangle with that includes a priest and a rabbi <laughs> would have some deep stuff to say but it ultimately doesn't um but it's still enjoyable yeah. i think yeah it's um, not bad there's even a scene in there where i think it's uh i think norton is leaving an answering machine message i think mila Schwarman is in this movie yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and he leaves a message uh as andy kaufman on the on the answering machine and there was a uh, this came after man on the moon uh came out and everything i believe that norton was one of the finalists to play andy kaufman in that movie oh really and and carrie ended up taking it and so then in this one it was sort of like a little play on like you should have gotten me yeah. i had edward oh which is funny milish foreman there's milish foreman is in this and bancroft is in this and mm. eli wallach is in yeah. this. yeah so there's some like heavy hitters by yeah. the way this is probably <laughs> as good a time as any because and ba you mentioned ann bancroft there was a uh, somebody on uh, facebook asked me to watch this one movie 84 charing cross road road hmm. um it came out in 1987 it's really sort of both new york and london hmm. and bancroft is this is a real life like brooklyn uh writer who uh really likes old books and stuff like that and she's going around new york and no none of the new york bookstores have the books that she wants she's very specific about it and bancroft's amazing in this mm. by the way i love me man and she's like 56 and she still looks mm -hmm. like she can get it <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard it put that way. It's, uh, I think it's a John Oliver thing. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but, um, 
but she uh she she ends up writing to this uh bookshop in london that anthony hopkins runs hmm. and uh says do you have these books and and uh so he sends her the exact books that she's looking for and then this uh you know then there's like an exchange back of like you know american money and all this sort of like american money that they have to convert into pounds and all this other stuff whatever there's like this initial like every time they send something back there's like some open-endedness to it so there's like this big pen pal relationship that starts so the whole movie is just like her writing letters and him writing letters and then you can kind of see their lives unfold over years and years of time and everything it's really fucking good really fucking 84 what 84 charing cross road came out in 1987 then there is King Kong, the 2005 Peter Jackson uh, version. I think all the King Kongs uh, uh, end up in Except New for York. the Skull Island. Except for Skull Island, right. <laughs> um, but, uh, and it was a better movie for it. Did you, um, uh, did you like this version? Uh, when I first watched it. I think we all got kind of swept up when, when it first came because out. Because right? Peter Jackson's right off of Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. when he did it. And he came out with a three-hour fucking King Kong movie. And it had cool effects in it, like all the little cre- the big creatures on the island and everything mm-hmm. are kind of cool. Man, oh man, oh man, though it does not hold up. Yeah. You watch it <clears throat> now; it's a, it's a just an absolutely long, drawn out. Like this, should, King Kong should never be this long. No. He did some things right. I think Circus is great as Kong. Mm-hmm. Um, Naomi Watts is perfectly cast. I think, especially that she does. She does that early, like, vaudeville physical comedy stuff before she even yeah, gets yeah. on the boat. She does it with ease, mm-hmm. uh, and that's not easy. Jack Black, I just think, is miscast, and yeah. it, was a, it was a big swing to to try and pull, like, a P.T. Barnum kind of a performance out of him, and he either didn't have it yet or didn't have it, and he kind of needs it to anchor the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I even think, what's his name, the love interest for Naomi Watts? Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody. He's pretty good in this. Yeah. Um, even Colin just Hanks is good in this. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. it's over long, and Jack Black's character doesn't work for me. Yeah, I was yeah. watching the uh, the 1976 version that always seems to come on uh, cable these days, and uh, that one's pretty good. Jessica not, Lang. Jessica Lang. Yeah. This is like I think. Yeah. Jess, I think Jessica Lang was like that was her first movie. She was yeah. like a model or something, and then they got her, and she's so gorgeous in that movie. Mm-hmm. But uh, Jeff Bridges and uh, uh, oh yeah, Jeff Bridges, Charles Grodin's in it. Um, and that one in the the forties or the thirty four version are a nice length. It's like an hour and a half mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, the the yeah, the, both of them are are fairly short, yeah. like an hour and a half movies. Yeah. This one, yeah, let, let's make it epic. I mean, yeah, I, I can see you wanting to explore Skull Island a little bit more and giving us all these big, you know, Weeda creatures that they keep they made and everything. It just after a while it gets tiring, especially. And I remember writing a sin for this. Once they get to New York, like Naomi Watts gets on stage or whatever, and there's this long like her singing, like the entire song. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And you're and and I remember watching. This is a for me. This is a Thursday night movie. Watching it at like ten, so eleven, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And it's like two o'clock in the morning, and this you know this fucking bitch is singing on the stage. <laughs> Oh, shit. you're like damn i'm already fighting off the sleep yeah, just no you kidding. know good god uh but uh i mean yeah it's not terrible it's just it's it strives for way more than it mm-hmm. ends up being uh kissing jessica stein i love kissing Jessica. oh stein. man so i just good, watched man. this like two months ago this is a great movie yeah i hadn't seen it since it came out it kind of had like an indie buzz when it came out mm-hmm. uh and it's about a girl who she's a writer mm-hmm. she's trying to come up with uh, an angle to write a series or a story and so she decides to try being a lesbian well there i don't think the the point of it is for her to write a story i think that she just like she hears a a, a personal ad in a newspaper that the the girl she ends up beginning with um has written and she finds it very interesting and intriguing the way she wrote it and uh they're just reading out ads for like her like to maybe answer like guy seeking girls all that Mm. type of stuff and this is before the internet and that's really you know before all the internet stuff and uh and she really loved the way this is written and everything and then her friend's like ah it's girl seeking girls and then you still see her still kind of affected by it like oh i might have to check this out and um 
and so like uh the first meeting is <laughs> first meeting is great with them there's the part where her her uh would-be girlfriend talks about sexy ugly <laughs> and and she's so like you know oh, yeah. like, and and she's like what do you mean by that and and uh the main girl's like goes through all these women he's like no i'm talking about like james woods harvey Keitel, <laughs> all that and uh and she, she jennifer westfeld the main character is like this is, uh she goes i find a lot of things sexy and she goes oh i don't <laughs> <laughs> And I think there's like a thing at the end where they say something like, uh, there's a thing at the end where there's like, like I think there's a ton of people out there that could be your soulmate. And he's like, I think there's like seven. <laughs> yeah. But no, Kissing Jessica Stein is a great movie and it's a, probably an underseen gem, sure. actually. Um, and it is New York as fuck, too. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would recommend this highly. Does it, you saw, you saw it recently. Does mm-hmm. it still hold up? I, I don't really remember anything being controversial or 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 something that oh um, yeah no it didn't stand out play well as like wouldn't play well in 2018 at all no because it's a it's an honest look at a relationship I was gonna right? say, it's a fairly honest look at a straight woman exploring not being straight it's yeah. not trying to be titillating it's not trying to be in your face about any of it it's just kind of like this is how it might go mm-hmm. oh yeah it's a super honest look at a relationship yeah, yeah. It, like it's it's easy for a movie like this to just try to do the whole happy thing and everything and and i know it's kind of a spoiler but it, it doesn't really go for the happy yeah, right happy thing and everything um but yeah uh i really really like this movie it's only got a 6.6 on the imdb that's really really too low it's really well done um then there is knowing i never saw this nick cage movie (laughs) christ Uh, i'll spoil this movie aliens aliens come down and uh and rescue uh the the people on earth that know about them Mm. that are knowing Mm. uh right before the earth is uh engulfed in a big fireball yes it fucking sucks. Oh, Honestly, man. the reason I, I'm having like trouble getting excited about this Mandy movie he's made <laughs> is because most of the people praising it are using words like Nick Cage at his Nick Cageiest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, dude, Chris saw it. I saw it. Um, Did you like it? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. Uh, the, 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 I can, it's very arty. I see what they're going for. It's very straightforward when it comes down to it. And no, this is not the Nick. This is not Nick Cage. It is Nick Cageiest. I'm sorry. That is too much of a superlative for what mm-hmm. he does in Mandy. Uh, Nick Cage is Nick Cageiest is a, is in fucking, uh, uh, was it uh, port call new orleans the bad <laughs> lieutenant that cage was doing things that i've never seen them done before <laughs> yeah that's that's the fu- that's him at his nick cages yes, don't give is. me this shit mandy just because the movie's kind of fucked up <laughs> i mean he's kind of normal actually except for like a couple of scenes mm. or whatever but yeah i didn't like it knowing is probably terrible too knowing is awful yeah. yeah no it's awful i don't even want to talk about um it. then there's maid of honor that's the m-a-d-e of honor with patrick dempsey and michelle monahan <sighs> this uh, is when uh, this is post gray's anatomy when that started and they thought hey patrick dempsey is sexy again. this is Let's the second stuff. time hollywood has tried to take patrick dempsey and make him a leading man shove him down our throats it worked better the first time yep when he was did. a teenager because yep. at least they put out a couple hits then. can't buy me love can't buy me love is the shit yeah <laughs> The delivery boy, that pizza delivery boy one, is yeah. the shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was the shit. Can't Man, that girl in Can't Buy Me Love. <laughs> oh, she's the hey, best. Yeah. That was like first <laughs> sexual awareness yeah. for me. That was first crush. That was like, oh, I am a sexual being. <laughs> yeah. this is the, That was the movie that came out before She's All That. It came out like 12 years before. Oh, yeah. And it's the exact same story, oh, essentially. Yeah. Basically. Uh, then there's Made in Manhattan. That's the Jennifer Lopez movie. That movie's terrible. Well, well, I think it made a lot of money, though. I it? can tell you this no. much. Oh, really? This movie is awesome if you're stoned. Okay. <laughs> I would love to know the circumstances by which you got stoned and said, Made in Manhattan for me. Well, I may or may not have been on the clock. Oh, no. Nice. Okay. And built that movie. Okay. And had to screen it, but really just needed an excuse to do some drugs. Okay. Nice. So it, it did, it made 94 million. This is McConaughey, right? No, it's, uh, Ray Fiennes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The Matt McConaughey one is. Oh, it's uh, the Wedding Planner. Wedding Planner. I'm getting those yeah. confused. I probably it, watched both they of are them stoned. Basically the same movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, this came out in December 2002 and it made 94 million. 
one, I think the wedding fifty five worldwide. Yeah, I think the wedding planner is the one that we're finally starting. But the going. Made in Manhattan one, if I remember right, again I was under the influence. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's a hotel maid who steals or tries on a dress of one of the rich people staying in the hotel, and then Ray finds who's a famous guy, senator maybe, Caesar, and falls for, and then it's like kind of like a Cinderella bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yep, yeah, that's what it is. I give you a thumbs down. Don't recommend unless you got some drugs. Handy. There you go. There okay. You go. Nice. Yeah, under those very... I would love to hear from you <laughs> out there. Anybody who's seen Made in Manhattan while smoking weed, I'd love to know if there are others out there. <laughs> uh, then there's Man on Wire, the documentary about uh, the walk across the uh, Trade Watch Center. Man on Wire. So Do not good. watch the walk. Not, and not only that, give the finger to the walk. Mm-hmm. Like, pass it in the store, give it the finger, and pick up... Man on a wire. <laughs> yeah. And then watch that because it's way more thrilling. Oh, yeah. So when good. you're talking about the real shit, mm-hmm. that's where, I mean, I know that the walk had the whole, like, it had IMAX type of shots coming from, like, way above and everything. Uh, but, like, when you know it's the real people and you know there's no stunts going on and all the, n- the walk across the World Trade Center is not even the most interesting thing about Man no, on yeah, Wire. Oh, yeah, yeah. The whole, like, getting in there is yeah. the most interesting thing about that. Like, yeah. the whole fucking plot of them trying to get in is fucking crazy. Oh, it is. so good. Um, But, yeah. Watch you some Man on Wire, guys. That, that is on, as thrilling as any action movie. This is one of those. Uh, it was on Netflix for a long time. I don't know if it's still on there. And uh, the wife and I just, just happened on it. And it's like, that looks interesting. Uh, And it was one of the coolest finds on netflix i think i've ever i've ever had because i knew nothing about it yeah didn't come recommended or anything like that just pulled it out and we were riveted for the yeah. entire i runtime. keep uh, i keep reading about this uh free solo movie being that kind of a documentary mm. experience like just kind of a wow i think it's out now or coming soon hmm. um, but it's the guy who free climbs i think it's el Capitan oh yeah yeah, or yeah, something. yeah 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 he finds uh, the the one route up oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like the first guy to ever do it. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait um, for that. <clears throat> but apparently the, the shots in that documentary are just incredible. Yeah, um, I can't wait. Uh, we've talked about Manhattan a little bit, and we've talked about Manhattan Murder Mystery a little bit. We'll go on to Margin Call. Mm-hmm. Uh, another That's a good movie. It's also about the 2008 financial crisis and everything. Very good movie. It's all done in basically one bi- like one room for the entire night, mm-hmm. too, and it's got a ton of people in this it. This is Kevin Spacey, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have Zachary Quinto, Stanley Tucci, Paul Bettany, Jeremy Irons, Penn Badgley, Simon Baker, Mary McDonald, Demi, Demi Moore. Um, Yikes. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's guys who are basically researching whether their firm has done something illegal. I think that's how that goes throughout the entire night, like trying to figure out how the numbers have been mm-hmm. fudged. And like it's the whole night up until a point where some I can't remember if they're getting bought or if they're like something's happening. The next yeah, day. something like that. I can't remember. It's the whole an thing. unexpectedly kind of tense movie too. Like there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff. It's it, a very straightforward premise, but there's a lot packed in there. I remember really enjoying. Them. Yeah, Margin Call is really good. Uh, Melinda and Melinda is another Woody Allen movie. Um, that- Comedy plus tragedy. Uh, it's uh, four people sitting around at a dinner table. Wallace Shawn and some other people that are like you know I. I prefer comedy because of this. I mm-hmm. prefer tragedy because of this. And then they act that out. And it, Rada Mitchell is the, the Melinda character in, in each of these uh, vignettes. And Will Ferrell st- is the, uh, the Woody Allen character and the, uh, the funny one. And I just remembered, uh, the main guy in the tragedy looking at a pregnant woman and be like, I've always wondered what it's like to make love to a pregnant woman. And I'm like, that's like a fucking Woody Allen line of dialogue if I've ever heard. Yeah. Of and it, it's not a it's not a good movie. We've spent too much time. Uh, Money Monster. I never saw this. Oh, this is the George Clooney one. Yeah, yeah. Julia hey, Roberts. Hey, what'd you think? I thought it was. I thought it was like enjoyable trash. Wasn't it just a little <laughs> better than you thought it was going to be? It was like it was like, basically what I enjoyed about it was Clooney and Julia Roberts accidentally slumming. Yeah, because they took this gig <laughs> with really high minded things to say. Right. But it's Julia Roberts and George Clooney. Yeah. And they're about to lecture the average blue collar American (laughs) on how evil it is that the rich corporations keep taking money from us. And it becomes this like farce that caves in on itself. I think it's super watchable trash. Yeah, it's crazy because this came out in like March or something like that. Like a, it came out like May, a year or two ago. It was May because we did a we did a whole oh, was uh, it? preview of but, it. But but it looked awful. It looked terrible. Yeah, it and I watched it and I was like, 
kind of kind of enjoyed that. Man, so I'm glad to hear you did. Uh, 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 I, I would not say anything else except super watchable yeah, trash. Yeah, it's yeah, got, yeah. it's one of those movies that has to come out and be on video, and then you just right. don't have any expectation. Of I it. mean, the idea of a guy going in with like a gun and a suicide vest and taking over. Mm-hmm. You know, the stock guy, the real stock guy who mm-hmm. goes blammo or whatever he does. <laughs> and and basically, I mean, I think the idea has been done before. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just it's like this weird hash of like recycled ideas, new ideas, super pretty rich people, <laughs> preposterousness. <laughs> uh, exactly. I would almost recommend it without yeah. the warn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Muppet Steak Manhattan. Obviously. Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody's Go getting ahead. married. Somebody's getting married. <laughs> oh boy, me can hardly wait. Uh, I quote this movie on the regular. It's my favorite Muppet movie, even though it's probably not the best. It's uh, one that I watched over and over and over and over and over and over and over as a kid. Uh, I probably have it memorized. The whole bit with Gregory Hines. Yeah, there you go. And the and him chasing down the purse thief and giving the purse back to Piggy and Kermit finding out that Piggy was there and Gregory Hines trying to interpret their fight where she's like, you gave Jenny the huggies. And he's like, you gave Jenny the huggies? And he's like, yeah, but that's what friends do. Friends hug. Friends do not spy. Anyway, I could do the whole movie. Is this the one where he gets amnesia and becomes Philip Phil? Yes. Okay. And it works at the ad agency. Yeah. It's ocean breeze soap. It's like taking an ocean cruise, only there's no boat and you don't actually go anywhere. <laughs> it's the greatest thing because they're all sitting around it's when the Muppets go to that fancy restaurant and they're sitting like a table yeah. to table. Yeah. And they're they're all looking and then somebody posits a question. They're like, hmm. 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 And all you, the little noses yeah, they go, what off. do you think, Gil? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Phil. What do you say, Jill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking love I'm watching this movie tonight. I love this movie too. <laughs> uh, yeah, basic, basic plot is the Muppets go to college. They graduate. They had this great musical they did and they're going to take it to Broadway because they're delusional. That's right. And they think that it belongs on Broadway. And hijinks ensue. Yeah, and right. uh, it's good. I'm telling you, saying goodbye. The song where they run out of money and they all decide to leave and go for their own lives and, and give up the dream. That'll make you shed a tear. Yeah, absolutely. Unless your heart is made of stone. Yep. <laughs> then there's The Night Before. That's the Seth Rogen movie. Uh, you like this at all? It's okay. It's okay, right? Yeah. it's worth. I think it's worth watching just for that Seth Rogen on drugs where the baby in church keeps making devil faces at him. Yeah. Soon. Yes. He's on drugs like from the very beginning, right? He because is. she gives she him, gives him, she gives him yeah. a box of drugs. Yes. Yeah. Which is like no wife ever would do that. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. But yeah, you have Jillian Bell, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I think Michael Shannon plays the god. He does. Well, An he's angel. the guy yeah. who's throwing yeah. the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's one of those. Uh, you know, did Anthony Mack use the other? Yeah. Anthony Mack. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those. Uh, you know, running around in the city late at night type movies or whatever, trying to find the mythical party. Yeah, yeah. yeah I night, think it's enjoyable. The, yeah, it, it's too. the night before Christmas, right? That's yeah. what they're. Yeah, they yeah. did. So the night before. Um. Yeah, I thought it was all right. Uh, then there's no reservations. That's the Catherine Zeta Jones, Aaron Eckhart movie. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, it sucks. Restaurant movie. They don't make enough good movies about chefs. I know this sucks. The burnt one with Bar- Bradley Cooper yep. sucked. The only chef movie that I can really get into is Chef. chef. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I watched this because I got into Top Chef and all those food mm-hmm. shows, and I thought I was going to get something good, and I did. There was a point there where just none of those were good, right? Simply Irresistible. God, oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me with a tuxedo crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, then there's uh, Other People's Money, which I believe is a Danny DeVito. Uh, it's like super 80s greed, Wall Street type of stuff, so mm-hmm. not very good. Uh, the Other Woman, uh, never saw this. That's that... Uh, Kate Upton, yeah, Kate, Kate Upton, uh, fucking Cameron Diaz, and the other woman. Is it Leslie Mann? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. It's so stupid. Yeah, I think I've seen parts. It's like basically the first girlfriend's club. Then there's P two. That's the West Bentley is a fuckoid movie. Oh, this is a really good movie. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, got uh, what is her name? Rachel Nichols. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've seen P two. She's right? stuck in a parking garage. On, oh yeah, on the night before Christmas. Oh actually, yeah, Christ, I didn't, I didn't realize what you were. I, I misheard you. Uh, I thought you said key to. Oh, and I was yeah. like, I've never heard of this movie. <laughs> yeah. No, P2 is, yeah, she's she's trapped in a parking garage, and Wes Bentley is like the guy who works, mm-hmm. and he's just a psycho who kills people. Yeah, he's and obsessed just, with her and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, and the whole thing is, I guess, how does he trap her in the parking garage? He, there's some way that he can seal it off, like with the with the the, the big gate that comes down, yeah. And somehow she can't get out, and then he actually like abducts her and puts her in his little yeah. Not little a terrible area. movie. No, I thought it was really good actually. Uh, very tense, very, uh, very quick, very straightforward. But uh, yeah, I liked it. 
Howard Stern's Private Parts. Love this movie. It's weird um, how much I like yeah. this movie. Right? It's one of the... This is right up there with 8 Mile in terms of those rare successes when somebody plays themselves. Because yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, it shouldn't work. I don't think Howard Stern would be a good actor in any other setting. I think he would admit that, too. Yeah. I think he probably yeah. would. Uh, the movie works really, really well. Um, yeah, I liked it. I and, only saw it the one time. Though. And it's got, uh, it's it's Paul Giamatti's, like, star-making performance mm-hmm. in this. There, there, the, we had a question in the in the sin box uh, thing where we were talking about um, uh, lines that we still use from movies mm-hmm. that have become, one of them uh, is Paul Giamatti's, you goddamn motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, um, he's, he's perfect in that role. He's great in that he plays pig vomit. Yep. Uh, and uh, the those the skits that they do in there, you can see why there was a lot of like, ooh, I yeah. don't know if uh, they can get away with that type of shit. It's but man, funny. they're great. I mean, Howard Stern is a singular being in that he bought in, especially at this point, he bought into his own bullshit. I think he tempered it and became a little more self aware after he moved to to satellite radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is like where he's proclaiming himself the king of all media and all that stuff. And it is very funny. And he does show some personalized stuff and everything, but it's also really self-aggrandizing. So you have to really like that stuff. Funny thing is, it's a super, it's a love letter to his wife, whom he divorced like yeah. a few years later. So wah, wah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then there, and we've, we've talked about these movies. You should see both of these. Rear Window, one of the best Hitchcocks of all time. Mm, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rope is another at least interesting Hitchcock movie. It's it's very good. I wouldn't put it in the top five or anything like that. But another another Hitchcock movie you should see. Scrooged. Remember <laughs> remember last time I said I was going to watch this shit. I haven't seen it yet. Ah, <laughs> it's so great. It's so Richard Donnery, but it's so fucking great. But yeah. we have talked about Scrooged a bunch before, so we're going to move on. I know that Bill Murray is that's a good Bill great Bill Murray movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's a uh, Shame which. Which Barrett helpfully tells me is the Foss Wiener movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shame, uh, uh, which is uh, Steve McQueen's. Uh, I think it's his, it's either his debut or it's like one of his somewhere around. Say, there. It's like his second film Boy, or something it's like that. Not a very not a very easy movie to watch. It is not. It's uh it's a very hard movie to watch. Uh, but Michael Fassbender and you have uh Carrie Mulligan. Mm-hmm. and it um and they're re- it's a performance movie those those they are great in it the actual story that goes along is like it's it's a maybe just a bit too heavy but it does have a good point yeah you've, you've seen this right no um uh, but i was gonna say every time uh, a website or tabloid reminds me that fastbender is with alicia vikander it blows my mind every i didn't time. i didn't know that they're, yeah, they're they're dating. I think they're married. Hmm. They've been that's, together for like four years. That's too much attractiveness. Mm-hmm. That's like a nuclear. They made a movie fishing. together. I've seen it. I can't remember what it's called, but I watched it because I was assuming it was the movie where they met and fell in love. Oh. Um, but it's just it's one of those things. It doesn't. It doesn't. I love both of them. There's no reason to say it, it doesn't feel right that they would be together. It doesn't make sense to me. It's too much sexy. Imagine having a threesome with those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be in my bunk. Right. Mm-hmm right oh man that's a lot of sexy right there. yeah it is it's too much you're yeah. right um yeah. then there's a uh, shattered glass we've talked about shattered glass a bunch uh this is hayden christensen's best performance ever for it's, sure it's one of peter sarsgaard's best ever if not his best uh this is this is great stuff um you know uh it's about a guy who invented almost everything that he wrote mm-hmm. like everything that was supposedly true was made up completely and then he went to, to and the links he went to to keep it that way and to get so that people wouldn't find the truth about it uh and then there's a whole just long just brilliant just engrossing section of Sarsgaard trying to figure this all out mm-hmm. and having glass with him the whole time and go, walking him step by step oh my god fucking movie's great <laughs> Uh, then there's fucking sliver. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. Fuck me. That's a New York movie. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's Billy Baldwin, right? Who uh, cares? I believe yes, it is. It's William Baldwin. Yes. Um, and Sharon, uh, Sharon, Sharon Stone. Stone. And it's, uh, it's a voyeur movie. She's, uh, she's trading on sex at this point <sighs> in her career. At after, this point. Yeah. After, well, uh, um, basic instinct. Basic instinct. Basic instinct yeah. yeah. This is basically basically she's in like she was in like king solomon's minds or some shit before basic instinct yeah yeah 
but yeah. she's in total recall oh that's right i forgot about that um but uh but, but yeah. yeah but this sliver was, a- was trading on that basic instinct goodwill quote mm-hmm. unquote yeah and- what if a guy had cameras in all the rooms in this building and what if one of the girls in there knew it and didn't care mm-hmm. yep and then fucking happens oh my that's god right. the movie's fucking terrible yep. all unwatchable. the spider-man movies have been in in uh, in uh, new york yep. we don't need to really uh, hash those could, out uh, it sounds like this far from home movie is going to spend as much time in europe as anywhere else though the next the next uh oh, i can't wait for tom it, holland yeah, spider-man yeah. movie i'm kind of excited about that ah, i haven't it. even heard that title oh yeah that's the they announced it like a month ago I guess because they knew set videos and photos were going to start leaking of them in like Prague and Paris and I, it looks like they're on some kind of school trip. I'm guessing ah. I'm guessing their academic bowl takes a trip to Europe because it's all it's Ned and the blonde girl. Is and, it going to be Spider-Man colon hostel? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be Spider-Man colon hostel two. Oh, OK. Oh, all yeah. right. There yeah, I can see that. <laughs> um, Summer of Sam. We've talked about this before. Spike Lee movie. This is about the summer of the son of Sam. Uh, unexpected it, orgy in this movie. There is an unexpected orgy in this movie. <laughs> is, John, it, is it the most unexpected orgy? Uh, this is extremely unexpected because mm-hmm. it's such a it's a gross movie. It's a gross movie. Mm-hmm. Like there, there's nothing that makes you feel good. And of course, it's about the, the son of Sam and all that stuff. But Leguizamo is just like a scuzzy dude. And they're really into dancing, and Mira Sorvino is his partner, and then they end up at this accidental orgy, and then they're 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 screwing each other, and not each other, the other people, and then he gets pissed off because she's enjoying it too much, yeah, and it's just fucking gross. Well, he's uh, he's uh, one of these guys who like uh, the th- he's cheating on his wife all the mm-hmm. way throughout the movie, and then like he's telling his friend like I can't do that type of stuff with my wife. It's yeah. wrong to do the things that I want to do with my wife uh but yeah it's not it's not really about the son of sam it does have it has that thread through it but it's that's why it's called summer of sam it's basically about these people living during the time that son of sam was you know reigning terror on new york and everything i think it goes over the blackout and all that Mm -hmm. type of stuff um tiny furniture i have seen this did you see it on movie? I did see it on movie. Huh. Um, i saw half of it i saw it on like cinemax or something mm -hmm. oh yeah i I liked it. I, I saw it before Girls came out. Uh, Lena Dunham. This is basically her life story. I think Angelica Houston is playing her mother. Is that right? No, In Tiny that's furniture. No, that's her mom. Her real mom. Is that really okay? Yeah, and her sister is her real sister. I don't know why I, I thought that, but yeah, it's it's basically a like a, a biography, and it informs the, especially the first few episodes of Girls is very much like tiny furniture like the dynamics of the family and stuff like that and it's got some it shares a little bit of the cast jemima kirk's in it and mm. it's got uh alex karposky's in it uh and it's and it's very like uh i guess you would say this is vignette too mm-hmm. uh is this the, the one where she drinks all her mom's wine while her mom's out of town and her mom gets pissed about it i think she does drink her uh, like maybe it could be alex karposky helps her out with maybe that. i can't maybe. remember what it is if it was like one of those type of things but um but yeah uh it is very much like a pre girls yeah and i like it a lot yeah i think it's i think it's very good it's very honest that's why people like girls so much is Mm -hmm. that she's very honest with her uh with all of her faults and all of her you know (laughs) there's a point where she has sex with a dude and some pipe or something like that like a they go off and they go to some construction site and then before they're about to have sex she's like you don't have aids or anything do you and she's (laughs) he's like no of course not and then you have sex and then she tells her mom about it later and says it's like uh you know evening wasn't all that great had sex in a pipe (laughs) you know um (laughs) Six and a <laughs> uh, then there's trading places this is one of my favorite comedies of all time is it really yeah oh see i, I this thing is just so too zany for go me go fuck yourself i, I know uh mm-hmm. no uh, this is eddie murphy and dan Aykroyd, and the uh uh the uh the story is that these two very extremely wealthy guys ralph bellamy and don amici who are like the kings of this it's a philadelphia store actually i thought Oh, no, it's New York Stock Exchange. Is it? Mm -hmm. Because I thought that, what is it about? So the brokerage is in Philadelphia. Right. But then they go to New York to do all the right. But anyway, you have Ralph Bellamy and Don Amici who are, who have made a $1 bet that they can get, they can make a, a rich man poor and a poor man rich, basically. Um, that, and that, um i'm trying to remember what the the crux of it was they're trying to it's nature versus nurture basically. Yeah, yeah yeah they're trying to say that the the poor man can 
well, I'm, I think they, I think they expect Eddie Murphy to just continue to steal mm-hmm. and stuff like that because he's a he's a small time criminal guy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's faking like he he's an amputee. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he can tell he's just on his knee. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's a small time criminal and everything. And then so so they get it, they make it to where uh, it, they make it look like Dan Aykroyd has stolen some money out of the out of uh, somebody's jacket or something like that. And he gets arrested and thrown in jail and all that. And he becomes essentially homeless. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, one of the people that helped with that scheme is Jamie Lee Curtis, who plays a hooker in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so Aykroyd tries to get back into his life, but everybody has shunned him. And meanwhile, Eddie Murphy actually has great ideas while he is in the in uh, under the wing of Amici and Bellamy during mm-hmm. this whole thing and um i i i don't know i love this movie and yes it does have some zaniness to it but um man it's no distinguished gentleman <laughs> <laughs> there's a part in coming to america where like uh eddie murphy walks by these two guys uh, like on the street <laughs> or whatever and like throws them some money or something and it's amici and yeah. bellamy it's we're awesome. back in the game yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh then uh very merry christmas that's the netflix thing i never saw this i would recommend watching this yeah uh, during the holidays i don't know if they'll bring it back uh but it's it's vignettes it's them you know snowed in at this nice little hotel and uh who uh bill murray and oh. like all of his little oh uh, miley's there miley's might, there i might watch for Miley. sings a beautiful rendition of silent night all right yeah it's 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 fun it's a fun truth movie. is though i could probably just watch that song on youtube yeah if you do watch this on YouTube, also uh, try to find uh, them singing "Fairy Tale of New York," which is about it's from the, a band called the Pogues, and uh, it's about uh, Christmas Eve in the drunk tank. It's very good. Nice. Uh, then we have Wall Street, uh, still famous to this day for Michael Douglas's "Greed Is Good" mm-hmm. speech and everything. Greed is right. I love Wall Street. I do too. The 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 the, the sequel sucked. The sequel is terrible. You know, the, that's an, that's one of those things, though, the stark reminder of what you're making when you're making a movie in 1987, mm-hmm. as opposed to something in like, I think this was Wall Money Never Sleeps was like 2009, 2010, yeah. somewhere around there. Uh, the, the, the way you make movies is completely different now. It just doesn't have any continuity whatsoever to me. When you make a movie that has a sequel, that's like 20 years and 30 mm-hmm. years in the future and everything, you're not making this. You, there's no coherence to that whole thing. Um, and this, that wall, yeah, money never sleeps. It's fucking terrible. Yeah. There's that's nothing the, redeemable, but about the, it. but wall street is just filled with all this just like meaty dialogue and like uh michael douglas is such a dick in this mm-hmm. movie sheen's a dick too but uh at least he realizes it yep. and everything martin sheen's great in yeah it. um that Dean. scene with the two of them or with the three of them basically but martin sheen and uh and uh michael douglas where mm-hmm. he's essentially taking him down a notch yeah and it, there's all this tension in it. It's funny. Yeah, yeah I well, didn't realize if I had forgotten, you watch it something like the American President. I do, and mm-hmm. I think, wow, what great chemistry they have together. And I, <laughs> I forget that they have spent time together on screen before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah, Wall Street. The I think the scene you're talking about is when they're trying to take over the airline. Yeah, he goes to th- their house. I think. Yeah, right? and yeah. going to the, yeah, and uh, they get all the union reps in there to try to get to hammer out this deal. And they're like, we're not going to sell this company. We're going to make it profitable and all that. And Charlie Sheen is going to be the guy who runs the company. And then Martin Sheen's like, well, you know, I guess if a guy, you know, uh, he used, he used to handle baggage over a summer one time, he can run an airline. Why not? You know, that type of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Wall Street's really good. Uh, The Wolf of Wall Street is obviously uh, another great movie, too. Martin Scorsese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i look i love watching this movie so much yeah i you, wish it weren't three hours you long can watch this and the big short back to back there's i mean it's they're the same kind of movie they're the, just as entertaining oh god this is just start to finish just so much fun oh yeah so quotable everything just just sings i, I wish they would find some spot to cut a little bit especially towards the back half but there's also like what are you going to cut i would maybe cut down that quaalude scene where he's on the phone and like yeah. crawling and all that stuff, but it's still so good. Yeah, I need to watch it again. Uh, and then uh, ending the the main list with the Warriors, which is uh, um, 
really good. I mean, that's it's it's kind it of is. a it's a cult favorite now, but I think it I think general generally like even critics have come around to think this is a a classic. It's West Side Story with with actual like stakes. Yeah, <laughs> right? and this is like that gritty New York too, man. Oh, yeah. Like that's just uh you know you see these subway these trains with all the graffiti on mm-hmm. it and everything and. This is a you know a gang trying to get back home and they can't because it's all fucked up. Everything's yep. fucked up, but it's great. Uh, and of course, it has the you know warriors. <laughs> Can you dig it? <laughs> all those are in there. Uh, honorable mention: Sex in the City, NYPD Blue, Seinfeld, and Friends. That's right. Although I think uh, what at least one of those Seinfeld was shot in California. But, yeah, uh, but it's a New York I show. And, and I assume Friends was too. Friends right? has to have been because it's got the same thing Seinfeld does. Anytime they go out on the street, it's just clearly an LA mm-hmm. studio. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, another honorable mention. Just because my wife went through and watched all of Ugly Betty again on oh, yeah. Hulu or Netflix, which was a good show. Uh, that's New York. As also fuck. had Vanessa Williams in it. right? Also had <laughs> Vanessa Williams. Is that, is that America Ferrera? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that show. Yeah, it was only on for four seasons. Um, and what it was trying to do is it is a pretty specific kind of com- dramedy, but uh-huh. it was doing it really well. Oh, interesting. Um, I'm going to go back and watch that. Yeah. Uh, the others uh, that you wanted to mention, Two Days in New York, never seen it. Yeah, me neither. I think they were trying to recapture like a, a before sunrise, before sunset. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, After Hours, which I recently saw as a Martin Scorsese movie with um, Griffin Dunn in it, mm. uh, where he's just going place to place and all the places happen to be connected in this weird, whimsical way and everything. It's actually a fun movie. Bride Wars. Never saw this. Heard it's terrible. No, I've taken dumps better than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie. This is the movie where, like, whatever your positive opinion of Anne Hathaway is, like, if you like, if you get up every morning and you open up YouTube and you pull up her tearful Oscar winning acceptance do. speech, <laughs> uh, this movie will prove to you that she too can stop trying every now and then. Yeah, this was the tail end of the worst decade for an actress ever, Kate Hudson. I think <sighs> Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey, who were who of course crossed into two different movies during this time, had the worst decade yeah. of any two actors oh, ever. It's bad. It's a Bride Wars is bad, bad, bad. Go, <laughs> go away. Uh, Cosmopolis. That's a David Cronenberg uh, movie. Robert Pattinson. Did you yeah, see this? Never Did saw you see this? this. I saw. I really tra- wanted to. I saw the trailer for it and was really intrigued. It's a yeah. guy who drives around. He's a super rich guy that drives around in his limo and never gets out. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And like it conducts meetings in his in his thing and. Uh, seemed really, really interesting. Didn't get very good reviews. I don't. Mm. I don't have any good reason for this, but I am strangely super interested in whatever Robert Pattinson is doing lately. I kind of am too, because I feel like yeah. for some reason he's making really interesting. He's come out of Twilight, mm. determined to make some really interesting artistic choices. Yes, yeah. I agree. Uh, then there's a Cure for Wellness movie came out last year. Um, you didn't like this, did you? Uh, no, it's very well shot, and uh, it's got some intrigue. It's almost like um, fucking uh, Nick Cage remake fucking movie. Wicker Man. Wicker Man. It's really? kind of got that. It got, does kind of have vibes of that. To it. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, it, it's a movie that I just want to love, and I just can't. Because it's Dane, De- Dane DeHaan. Dane DeHaan. Yeah. Yeah, it's not... I didn't like it, and it's not just because of him. Yeah. Uh, again, he. I actually think he's he's probably got more talent than we've the, seen. It's yet. one of those where the trailer is way better. The trailer had like a it's lot good trailer, of like yeah. amazing shots in it, and you're like, oh, how does this? And then you watch it in the movies context, it's like, oh, it's not. How about a double feature of the Cure for Wellness and the Road to Wellville? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I might do that just for masochism. It'd be person. like you like dr- like taking drugs without having to take drugs. Watching yeah. those two movies back. Uh, there was the uh, parody of Donald Trump's "The Art of the Deal," where Johnny Depp played Trump. I actually think I saw this. I always wanted to watch it because it seemed, but it wasn't good. This was before he was elected, so yes. it, it was it was easier to take mm-hmm. as a humorous thing yeah. i don't think i would watch it now i actually I, I actually think i remember watching this and i didn't like it but um garbo talks this is sydney lumet uh movie about greta garbo mm-hmm. yeah got never really saw this cast. never saw this uh jack ryan shadow recruit that's the only jack ryan i think i haven't seen other than the amazon show. this is the one with costner and chris pine yes. and Kira knightley and it's nowhere near deserving of any of the three other talents should have been a lot better it's worse than like some of all fears well 
yes, but I also like some of all fears. Mm-hmm. I would put some of all. I would watch some of all fears before I would watch Clear and Present Danger. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, Lost in Yonkers. I, Mercedes Rule is yeah. that who's in that? And I, uh, Richard Dreyfus. Okay, I never saw it. I saw it. I saw it once. Uh, I remember thinking, boy, if I was from there, it might be more impactful. I know, man. I I like Neil Simon. I like every time that I, I see stuff that he does, but I feel like there's a lot of inside jokes yeah. for New Yorkers. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah, I just yeah. Can't get it. Uh-uh. Chris, you'd probably like it a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you're kind of a Yonker. <laughs> kind of, but bit of a yonker for sure. Uh, then there's Man on a Ledge. Uh, that's a Sam Worthington movie. Um, Jeremy, have you seen this? This yep. seems like a Jeremy movie. Yeah. Did you like it? No. Okay. It 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 wants it wants to be law abiding citizen. <laughs> cool. Because this motherfucker has a whole caper plan. Uh-huh. He gets up on this ledge, fully knowing cops are going to be called. People are going to draw attention. But he's enacting a heist while he's on the ledge ah so it basically wants to be inside man meets uh law-abiding citizen and it's not that good maybe no. phone booth no. yeah <laughs> well, no, phone booth is another new york one that i forgot to put on oh there. yeah also i noticed you didn't put center stage anywhere on this list dude i've got i've got a million lists. ballet movies need their due motherfucker uh place. margaret which was the kenneth Long- lonergan movie uh i remember it coming out uh oh it's the no never mind yeah, I remember it coming out, but I don't remember any. I didn't see it. I for a second there, got it confused with that Schwarzenegger zombie daughter movie, Maggie. Oh yeah, <laughs> this you- is uh, Anna Paquin, Mark Ruffalo, Jean Reno, Allison Janney, Kieran Culkin, Matt Damon, Rosemary DeWitt, um, Matthew Broderick. It, it, there's there's a ton of people. Great mm-hmm. cast. And in 2011, I completely missed this. I don't even. Yeah, I, I remember it com- uh, directed. I remember it coming out. I did, this didn't have good good reviews. I don't think. Uh, mostly positive, seventy five percent, seven point one. Ah, okay, maybe no. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it. Uh, the Nanny Diaries, I have seen that shit. Oh, that's <laughs> Scarjo. Scarjo, Chris Evans again too. Yeah. Basically, there was a whole run there where they were making a lot of movies like Double Wears Prada, The Nanny Diaries, and they were all based on memoirs of people who worked for rich people. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, then there's Ocean's Eight, which came out earlier this year. It's okay. Um, it was okay. Yeah, it's okay uh percy jackson and the olympians the lightning thief <laughs> fuck me <laughs> didn't we have to re-upload that one too yeah and this whole thing so that's what the 13th upload or well, something like that well yeah because when we first uploaded it i uploaded it at about 12 or 13 times <laughs> because it kept getting dinged uh pixels which is a terrible adam sandler movie mm. one of the worst did you see it yes yeah. oh well I, I i was uh i was a co- co-center on that movie. oh wow well uh ten thousand saints i've never heard of this oh i've seen it yeah i don't remember who's in it i think he, this is a another jeremy movie i feel like i've seen it i feel like it's got s- somebody named sean in it <laughs> <laughs> it's uh asa butterfield uh Haley steinfeld oh, Ethan i have Hawk, seen it yeah Neil she's Hirsch. pregnant they're like uh new york street children that create their own uh artificial family unit is it good uh not really okay I never heard of it, but it's got a really good cast. Yeah, I like well, I like Haley Steinfeld, and I like Asa Butterfield, um, mm-hmm. and that was the reason I watched it. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't watch it again. Uh, then there's La Vie on Rose. I still haven't seen this. This is the Marion Cotillard uh, <sighs> movie where he where she plays Edith Piaf. Yeah, I've seen like a few minutes of it, and it looked amazing. Yeah, and but again, biopic. Uh, Edith Piaf has a really interesting backstory. I think she was a prostitute for a while, and she was on the wrong side of the law, and then she had this uh really uh, amazing voice um and yeah she won the oscar for it marion mm-hmm. cotillard won uh then the wolf pack has a documentary about uh, seven kids locked in an apartment do you There's, remember this no. coming out Mm-mm. uh it's about like a, a group of uh of brothers who reenact uh because they're shut in they're literally shut in they can't go out at all their father doesn't allow them and so they recreate trailers and movies they do like reservoir dogs oh and i need to see stuff. this shit I only saw the trailer. The trailer will suck you in immediately. It's a documentary. It's a documentary, and it follows them as they it's gonna get, get dark. out. It's gonna I think get so. Dark. It, it follows them after they get out, and they're trying to ingratiate themselves into society, and they have no social skills beyond what yeah, they've developed. It's gonna be hard to watch, yeah. but I, it, it now is on my list. It's interesting. It sounds it, intriguing. It looks like an interesting. Story. Finally, yeah. Uncle Drew came out. That came out this summer. I never Fuck saw that it. movie. Well, and it didn't get horrific reviews like it got middling to somewhat positive reviews i remember reading reviews saying hey it's not as bad as you would think it would be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that's not i mean this day and age it's not doing it for me i anymore. guess not no i'm just i'm just surprised it wasn't like 
emoji movie panned. Yeah. Remember when I asked, would you be surprised if this movie made fifty million dollars when we were doing the <laughs> yeah. spring preview? It made forty two million. Interesting. Right. Well, um I'm just telling you that so that you know that I'm always right and never <laughs> argue with me. There you go. No, um, that will do it. If a lot of you want to come out of the woodwork and say, what about this movie? And what about that movie? We got another part coming. Yeah, up. We're, we've got some, some territory to cover. Um, but, uh, that'll do it for this week. Um, keep going to Syncast presented by CinemaSins on Facebook. Keep going to our CinemaSins Twitter. Keep going to SoundCloud. Give us questions. Give us comments. All that stuff. And listen, everybody, I did a poor job in telling you all about this because it's brand new but we do have a patreon mm. uh, page right now and you get amazing perks as being uh, as signing up for a patron there's three levels um some of it is early access to this here podcast to videos uh there's a there's a tier where you can have a video chat from this podcast studio uh you can be kind of in charge of our content we're going to give up polls and see what you want us to watch for mini pods and uh for sending purposes down the road so go to patreon.com slash cinema sins uh see if you're interested if you're interested in the perks we're really excited about this so definitely uh if it's within you to uh to uh, sign up for that we would appreciate it yeah that'll be awesome uh anyway was that, that better that was better it was a little better that was better <laughs> Uh, that'll do it for this week's Chris Atkins and Jeremy Scott and Barrett share. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. I can neither confirm or deny. <laughs> I don't. I don't have. Uh, it's so beautiful, but I hate that I can see that. Did you see the Onion article where it's like, where it says Saudis insist that that uh, journalist was dismembered when he walked in there? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> Which means the next one will have Queens, Brooklyn, and New York State in yeah. it, and Staten Island, if we really care about that shit. <laughs> we, can talk, we, can, we can talk about the first purge. Yeah, exactly. Because um, that takes place only on Staten Island, right? Yeah. Um, Wait, Staten Island? Yeah. Which one is that? It's the it's the fifth borough that's just in the middle of the water, basically. It's between oh. New Jersey and New York. Not that's the one with the Statue of Liberty. Well, it's it's, it's, it's next. It's it's on the way. The ferry oh. that Spider Man fucks up yeah. on in Staten Island. Staten Island ferry. ferry, and yeah. that's a real that's a real ferry. Yeah, uh -huh. it's a free ferry, which is another weird thing about. God, I could talk about first purge all that. <laughs> like, there's, there's, like they're like, uh, oh, woe is us. Uh, the fucking poor people can't get off the island. There's a free fucking ferry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to talk, don't get me started on fairies because I'm writing sins for skyscraper right uh, now, and he takes like the most unnecessary fairy in all of film history in the beginning of this movie, and I've already written like five sins about it because they go out of their way to put this mother. He almost gets killed. There's an assassin trying to kill him on the ferry, and there's a road that goes right from where he is to the place he takes the ferry to. There's no. This is the most unnecessary fairy ever. Unnecessary. <laughs> unnecessary fairy. We've already come up with a new movie right there. Also, have either of you seen Skyscraper? No. Oh, balls. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm, this, I'm in top form on this one. I'm telling you. <laughs> I gotta watch it. What? Which is weird, because I like them both. Yeah, and there's nothing like like an ice cold 7-Up on a, on a hot day. Well, and for me, it's exactly... I could be wrong. For me, it's exactly like Pepsi and Coke. Co Coke, and, Coke and Sprite are have a bit more bite, and yeah. Pepsi and 7-Up are a bit sweeter. Yes. And... I like all four of them. <laughs> I like them all. I like all of them. <laughs> I would not want to choose unless I had to. Uh, the uh, Charlie XCX and uh, Troy Savon did a, a song called 1999. Are they reminiscing? Yes. God, reminiscing. That wasn't that long ago, people. Yeah, well, I, I don't think 19-year-olds should be allowed to reminisce. Exactly. The, he was three years old in 1999, and she was six years old in 1999. Well, and it's like Adele when we were young. Bitch, please, you're still in your 20s. <laughs> Did you just bitch please Adele? <laughs> you did. I'm just saying. <laughs> you did. Although she's in her 30s now, right? 
I'm sorry, Adele. I didn't mean to bitch please you. I just, she's a god. I'm just saying, come on. When we were young, you're young. You know, Bet Midler can make a song called When We Were Young. Yes, definitely. Chart topping artist. Honestly, Bet Midler Bette Midler pr- could probably kill that song. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. I'm not even a Bet Midler fan, but I bet if she sang When We Were Young, that Adele song, I bet she'd nail that shit. You say no, then you're an asshole. You say yes, then you're just being a bitch at that point. <laughs> yeah, man, go for it. <laughs> Take yeah. that. Laura Smet. She is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She is she is very pretty. There's one part on that uh, that 1999 video, the script that I just sent, uh, where Charlie XCX mm-hmm. is dancing in a bikini, and it's just one of the sexiest things I've seen in forever. So, but in the description, and the the sin is the narrator losing track. He's like, oh, I'm going to send this, and and uh, what was I saying? Again? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the description before the actual sin. I'm like, Charlie's dancing. And looking very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Back in place, and I'm all up in your face with a rhyme that I embrace. Like a mother to her child, I'm kicking it Jesus style. To the ones that think they heard, I did use the J word. Because I ain't too soft to say it, even if DJs won't play it. Is that DC Talk? It's DC Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling, but is that Jesus Freak? Is that no, the- that's... Uh, I think that's... Do, 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 do. Jesus is just all right. Jesus is still all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was D- D- Toby Mac, and the Mac is back, no slack. <laughs> uh, DC Talk like had an actual... On a microphone ...secular that's hit, didn't they? Beyond comprehension. I believe that I failed to mention that. They had uh, Jesus Freak, I think, got Jesus a little Freak, bit of crossover play. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus Jarza is Clay just had better right. crossover play than DC Talk ever did. Rain, Jarza Clay rain is... on my face. <laughs> 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 that is the 90th fucking song. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. Don't get yeah. me wrong. And if I don't swim <laughs> after 40 <laughs> days in my life. All right. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like mustard on my movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My favorite part of Sling Blade is after he's been told the joke about how there's a guy from Arkansas and a guy from Texas uh, peeing off of a bridge. <laughs> and the joke is, is like the uh, the water is really cold or whatever from the bridge. The guy from Texas, the, this water's cold. And then the guy from Arkansas says the water's deep, too. And, and and so that's the joke. But then later he tries to tell it. <laughs> Two guys are going on to the going to the bathroom off of a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> one says it's deep. The other says it's cold. I think one of them from Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think there should be a thing where people do like impressions out of context. So it's like <laughs> Sling Blade doing lines from Seinfeld. Yeah. Like, mm, you got to see the baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That looks like Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> Those aren't boys. <laughs>